back, everybody. Oh, you guys, I'm nervous. I'm nervous, but I'm excited, but I'm also nervous. Uh, you know, I have my theories. I've told you guys some of my theories before. I don't know if they're going to come to pass. I don't know if I'm right, but oh, it does make me a little nervous. But I'm also like, I have a feeling that we're going to be learning in this upcoming parts of the quest a lot more about Farina. I think we're going to learn a lot more about her as a character, a lot more about her motivations, a lot more about her as a person. And for that, I'm super hype. I'm super hype because I find Farina super intriguing and I just want to know more about her. Like, I'm so curious about why she is the way that she is. Why is she so secretive? Like, I just want to know what's going on. But boy, I'm, I'm also kind of nervous. This is going to be an emotional roller coaster, I'm sure. And I am ready for it. Anyways, we got we lost Farina. She's missing. We got to go find her. This place looks deserted. Oh, it does look very... All that's left here are signs of devastation. Yeah, wow. Could Farina really be here? Well, I mean, find her as soon as possible. if you're gonna hide anywhere, I suppose that this is the place. Ah, uh, hello, are you? And they're, maybe they really need to fix this bridge, man. I mean, goodness gracious me. Oh, it's, I, I think I see an Archon down there. That does look like a Hydro Archon down there. I'm just gonna swoop in from the side so she doesn't get too startled by my presence. Oh, hello. Hello. I noticed that you're sulking at the bottom of Poisson. How's it going? Look, that's Farina right over there. She really is here all on her own. Shh, be very, very quiet, Paimon. We don't want to spook her. She mm -hmm. might fall over if we spook her. Should I just give up? Oh, this is all meaningless. Great voice acting. You can tell that she's been crying. What was meant? She is crying actively. After all, everyone's dead. Mm, and this, ah, oh, this is this is exactly what I wanted to see. This is what I was waiting for. Is I, I've been waiting so long to really see her vulnerability, and I this is this is great payoff. I'm sorry. Oh. I'm so sorry. And she feels so responsible for it all. Give up, Farina. There's no point in holding out. And this is so relatable too. It's like sometimes you have you have you have plans, you have things that you want to accomplish, whether that's, you know, stopping a prophecy, <laughs> or it could just be something as, as simple as as just like an everyday goal. And sometimes when things keep getting in your way and it keeps feeling like it's just going worse and worse and worse and worse and spiraling down, you just start to feel like, well man, what's even the point? Like I guess I should just give up at this point. So this is actually very relatable. And especially in a situation as dire as hers, I can completely understand why she feels this way. <laughs> Aww. I'm sorry. And she just, it's like she just keeps apologizing and apologizing. And you can see that she, I mean, she really cares about her people. She didn't want any of these losses. Do, other than to repeat meaningless apologies over and over. Mmm. Farina. Uh, who, uh, who's that? And she was so focused on her grief that she doesn't even realize our, that, that, that we're here. She didn't even recognize our presence until we call out to her. That really says a lot about how deeply she feels. Don't worry, Farina. It's just us. Just us. Don't worry. We, want, we, we, we just wanted to make sure you're okay. <laughs> so it is you. And then the mask on flips on land. immediately. Why, I almost thought you were summoned from that mob of my ignorant subjects. Come wow. to kneel and beg for my forgiveness. That is, that's, that's, that's actually incredible from a character standpoint, how quickly she goes from sobbing and losing her composure and apologizing to <sharp inhale> sucking it all in, pushing it to the back of her mind, recomposing herself and putting on that like chipper happy mask. Farina, you were crying just now, weren't you? The tear stains on your face are off. Yeah, kind of hard to hide it when it's, it's so recent. Uh... What do you mean, tear stains? But of course she's gonna oh, deny oh, it. Oh, I remember. The show uh, at the Opera House earlier this morning was so moving. I'm still trying to process it. She is just so intriguing. She is so intriguing. It's it's the way that she is such a vulnerable person and yet cannot be vulnerable in front of other people. <laughs> Who did that uncivilized rabble think they were? Disturbing my enjoyment of the arts. 
Dang, it's crazy how quickly she composes herself they here. They even dare to tout their Archon. I must teach them a lesson. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I can just imagine and the giggling and frustrated faces once they realize that I'm nowhere to be found. That's crazy. And I, I mean, I think it says a lot about she's probably had a lot of practice with this, with quickly composing herself in a split second. Oh, and I'm sure Nouvellet and those people from the Marish to say Phantom are freaking out right next to them, too. <laughs> yeah, she can stop trying to act tough, okay? We just saw through your mask, my girl. It's, it's, you know, it's not that easy to fool us. Uh, you're actually beyond devastated right now, aren't you? Yes. I, uh, of course not. It's not as easy to hide it when you're asked so directly, huh? Hey, there she is. The Hydro Archon's over there! Oh god, I hope these people don't absolutely destroy her. Please Quick, be nice. Her. Please be nice! Okay, she's going through a lot right now. Uh, be Marina, empathetic, be please! Oh, are th oh. Uh, they are? <laughs> they are just some rabid fans who want to cut the line uh, because they haven't been able to meet me in person, aren't they? You know, that's not quite the vibe that I get from oh, them. That's against the rules. I can't let them get their way. I, I, I mean, I guess you better make your exit. <laughs> and she exits the stage. Uh, Farina just ran off. Quick, we have to catch up with her. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, 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 I want to know more. I want to, I'm, she's so interesting. Dang, we are fast, though. She had, like, a five-second head start on us. Uh, and we're, like, right on her heels. <laughs> Idiots. Idiot. They don't even know. <laughs> Stupid lol. Get got. Get got, NPCs. Oh, that's convenient. There's a little boathouse. Why don't we go in there to, to have, a, have a little chat? We could have some tea, have some cake, maybe? There's a good hiding spot over here. Quick, come to Paimon before the rest of them catch up to you. Oh, okay, I really hope that we don't betray her trust. Because, like, you, you know, we had this whole plan to, like, to, 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 to catch her and make her tell us stuff. And now we're being so empathetic towards her and helping her out. And I just hope that we're not going to, like, betray her trust. Uh, wh what? What is this place? Like, is, is all this, like, are, are, are we in, like, plan traveler mode? Or are we in just, like, empathetic human traveler mode right now? I don't know. It makes me a little nervous. Hurry, they're almost here. Yeah, come, 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 come closer, come closer. Fine, fine. I suppose haste is warranted. Lead the way. This is, this is a very convenient little boat house right here. Oh, how quaint. Lovely. <sighs> Whew. Oh, one's exhausted. Nice. No windows, one door. Nice little uh, small enclosed space. This is great. This doesn't make my this doesn't exacerbate my claustrophobia in any way, shape, or form. <sighs> I'm so tired. <laughs> Bro, I totally thought they had caught me. We ran for like like twenty seconds, man. <laughs> uh, no, I mean I merely gave in to the sheer enthusiasm they displayed. <laughs> and I wonder, does she feel pressured to be perfect all the time just because of her role as the Hydro Archon? Like she seems to put a lot of her, she seems to put a lot of pressure on herself to appear perfect all the time, at least outwardly. Um, this place is not what I'd call soundproof. Uh, you might want to lower your voice to stay hidden. Yeah, she just, she carries herself with so much of this, like, larger-than-life, uh, grandeur. It's very interesting. Uh, you were right. Yeah, we gotta, we gotta do, we gotta use our inside voices. Yep, that's a good girl. <laughs> good girl, give her, give her head pats, fine one, give her head pats. Uh, <gasps> oh! Uh, Hey, 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 what's the idea? No uh, funny business. What's happening? The ground's shaking. Is oh, it an earthquake? No, yeah, another disaster just struck, I suspect. That's yeah. not good. A quake of this kind preceded the flooding and uh, did it? Oh, no, that's real bad. It can't be. It's happening again. 
Oh, no, that's, I mean... Well, there's no need to worry too much about that. Nivellet's made some emergency plans, so uh -huh. the evacuation should go a lot smoother this time. I mean, one can only hope, but at the same time, that's not really like a good uh, uh, precursor for what might be to come. I feel like all of these small incidents are just sort of like leading up to the impending doom that is soon to be upon us. Yeah, I hope you're right. Yeah, I, yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I do trust Nervalette. I trust Nervalette to, to, to have it handled, but it's it's still not a good sign. But the people of Poisson, they've already... I mean, not, not, not all of them, if it's any consolation. I, eh. Has Farina finally reached her limit? Now that she's talking about her actual feelings, she's starting to look far less stiff. I know, it's rare to see her drop the mask like this. At least in front of us. You begin to talk amongst yourself as Farina it's slowly true. calms down. I've been investigating the prophecy for hundreds of years. Hundreds of years. Yep, she's been dedicated behind the scenes this I whole time. I once had informants all over to VAT, searching for clues and feeding information back to me. Mm. I've tried all kinds of ways, too, to hold back the sea. Mm. Anything to keep the coastline from advancing. Yeah. And that's kind of sad, like, all this time, she's kind of just been doing all of this on her own, you know? Like, I don't really think that Farina has anybody to confide in or to share her feelings of, of anxiety or her concerns or her worries with, you know? And that's, that's kind of sad. She's very much alone in a lot of ways. But all my efforts proved to be futile in the end. Mm. Really, the truth has been clear to me for a very long time. And what a horrible feeling that must be to be actively trying to do absolutely everything you possibly can to prevent a disaster, and yet it just feels completely inevitable. We cannot make an enemy of the divine. Mm. No matter what we do, the will of the heavenly principles will have its way, and the prophecy shall be fulfilled. Mm. But even then, you still haven't given up, right? And she still keeps trying. Like, even though... It's, it's going against the will of the gods, even though it's going against fate itself, she still keeps trying. <laughs> Give up. <sighs> I do love the sound of that phrase. Mm. It would mean finally coming to terms with fate, but also for me to finally be free. Yeah, I would imagine that it's, um, again, probably quite exhausting to be doing all of this by oneself constantly fighting against something that seems unchangeable, that seems like an absolute truth, that certainly must take a toll on a person. Um, but that would also mean that all hope would disappear. You're our last hope, Farina! Indeed. I've thought about giving up so many times. Uh-huh. Especially after we almost lost Poisson. I can't blame her for that. I can't blame her for that. Again, it's like sometimes you just reach a breaking point and you're just like, I give up. I just, I just give up. Fate is really unreasonable, isn't it? Mm -hmm. It has no heart and obeys no rules. Very harsh truth, yeah. The prophecy yeah. has only just started to come true, and so many people have already lost their lives. Mm-hmm, yep. But just now, it all became clear to me. I still don't have the right to come to terms with fate on behalf of everyone else. Mm, and she's she's so self-aware in a lot of ways, too. Like, the fact that she recognizes, I still don't have the right to come to terms with fate on behalf of everyone else. As long as the final moment hasn't come, it's still not too late. And respect, respect for her resolve here. It takes a lot to be able to still see a light at the end of the tunnel when the tunnel is very, very dark. Don't worry. I... I will keep hope alive for everyone until the very end. And you know, I have a feeling that that might be part of why she acts the way that she does. It could be that she just doesn't like being vulnerable, but I think another aspect of it probably is because of her love of her people. She wants to keep hope alive for everyone. She wants to play that role to the bitter end. <sighs> to be the Archon that they adore, to be the Archon that they believe in. She wants to, she wants to act as that character for her people, for their sakes. Very admirable. Well, that's <laughs> enough for now. I got the impulse to play the stricken maiden, but honestly, considering my rank and station, that 
wasn't a good fit at all. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh my goodness, dude. Even when she finally is vulnerable, she can't admit that she was truly vulnerable as herself. She has to make it seem like she was playing a character. <laughs> Don't take any of what I just said seriously. How could I possibly let Fontaine fall to the whims of trivial prophecy? Mm hmm. Yeah, I mean, you make a good point. And this is what I mean. Like, this is this is the role this exactly this persona. This is the role that I think she plays in order to ease the minds of her people. Come on. Paimon could have sworn you were actually being honest. Just yeah, now. she was. But she was she would never admit to it. Never in a million years. We're running out of time. We can't just go back to square one like this. I have to get more information out of her. Uh, Farina, you might not have to shoulder this burden alone. Yeah. and But the thing is, she's been shouldering it alone for a long time. So she might not be very receptive to the idea of help. Um, although I don't know what you might be keeping from everyone, your people are more than willing to share your burden with you. Share my burden. And it's very possible that whatever she's cooking is a burden that she feels she has to bear on her own. That's impossible. Mm. It was stated right from the start that this would be my duty alone. But even if your burden doesn't need to be shared, you can still choose to confide in someone. That's true. Exactly. Even if fate has dictated that this burden must be hers alone to bear, that doesn't mean that she cannot share some of her emotions and her sorrows and her worries and her anxieties with another person. That doesn't mean that we can't help carry the emotional burden of all of this. And again... Just because fate dictates that something will come to pass, as we've just established in the, in the previous parts of this quest, that does not necessarily mean that there are no caveats or that there is no way to defy fate. Again, as Mage N stated, Celestia has blind spots. Just share it with me. I'm what you'd call a witness. I swear to God, we a better not betray her trust. I feel really bad because Farina is somebody who like it's already so difficult for her to be vulnerable with anybody else and I would just feel so terrible if we got her to be vulnerable only to like y you know like p play the role of the quote-unquote hunter and and like have her feel like we manipulated her into giving us a bunch of information. Anyways. A witness. <sighs> Yes. I've heard that you came to Tevat from beyond the stars, yes. Yeah. In other words, you never belonged here. Yeah, in other words, I might be the twist that we need in fate right now. And if Tevat is, in its entirety, a show on a stage, then you're just a spectator, aren't you? Am I? I would say that that remains to be seen. I don't know if I'm actually really just a spectator. I, I might actually be one of the characters on the stage. Again, I have a feeling that Traveler is going to be very key in defying the rules of fate. If that's the case... Mm-hmm. You want to share some stuff with me? Yeah? Yeah? Tell me what you got happening in that, in that head of yours. Uh, there's no time left. Please, Farina, just spit it out. All right, let's see. She's considering it. Paimon's uh, like, come I... on! Come on! Uh, it's not that simple, though. It's not that easy. Oh, no. Oh, God, another one! Uh, 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 Oh, wait. Oh, no! Wait, no! This is exactly what I didn't freaking Ladies want to happen! This concludes my opening performance. Now she's not gonna trust us! Uh, like, she was just about to spill the beans, and now she's not gonna trust us anymore? Uh, now, without further ado, and we in may proceed to the In front of everybody? Of okay, I mean, I understand why we thought this was necessary, but man, I feel really bad. I feel really bad about this. <sighs> So, this is what it is. Uh, yes, you deserve praise for the effort you took to raise the dramatic stakes. Man, dude, like, I f she was just about to be vulnerable with us of her own volition. 
And then we pull this crap! Oh, I feel bad. Do not forget, however, that I am Thosalor, the god of justice. The uh, embodiment of justice itself. I feel so guilty. Does it not strike you as even the least bit absurd to bring the very concept of justice to trial? That is very interesting. But I actually like the concept of this. Bringing the very concept of justice to trial because again, what is justice? Is it the will of is it is it the will of the one? Is it the will of the many? Is it the will of the oratrice? Is it the will of Farina? Is it the will of Nervolette? What is justice? I actually I actually like that they're bringing this into question, but boy, do I feel guilty. May I interpret these words? As your refusal to stand and, trial. Oh my god, like all of us are just betraying her and I feel really bad because she was just about to be vulnerable. Uh, In that case, <gasps> you will have the opportunity to defend your honor through a duel. Uh, oh, come on, man. Oh, okay. I mean, like, again, I get, I understand. I just feel bad. Like, I understand why we took the path that we did because, again, these are dire circumstances, but I do feel bad. You, oh, man, I feel you bad. would draw your blade against a god? And it almost feels like she's like, not just you would draw your blade against a god, but it's like you would draw your blade against me? Like, she's like, she's like, I thought we had something, man! I thought we were cool! Uh, uh -huh. And in I front see. of her people, it too. It seems like you have made up your mind. Uh, I'm sorry! I'm really sorry. I'm sorry. Ah, I feel really bad! I can't believe it. Uh, she, she just surrendered. Oh man, I feel so awful about this. I feel so awful about this whole thing. Uh, what the heck is going on? Did I just see an archon surrender to a, a human? And that's and that's a very interesting move as well. I wonder why she makes the choice to surrender. We have seen Farina does not seem like much of a fighter, and that's something that I was really curious about as well. Like when uh, in, in the previous installment, when Arlecchino attacked her, like when Arlecchino was in her assassin outfit and attacked her, she begged for her life. She didn't try to defend herself, and that was something that I found very, very fascinating about that scene. Wow, how utterly humiliating. Now, don't be so judgmental! Shut up! Lady Farina, what is the meaning of this? Uh, <sighs> hmm... It would seem that there has been a misunderstanding. Ah. To be clear, the raising of both hands is not always an indication of surrender. Okay, elaborate. Looking for excuses again, huh? Shut up, Paimon. Let her, let her, let her explain herself. I raised my hands just now to indicate my acceptance uh, of the trial. Okay. No duel shall be necessary. Okay. All right. Fair. I will admit that I've been running away for a long time. Okay. I'm sorry, everyone. I was unable to protect the people of Poisson. Mm. It is my duty to stand trial for my crimes. Wow. That's not, that's not the direction that I was expecting it to go. You are not the only ones to be disappointed in me. I, too, am exceedingly disappointed in myself. I was not expecting her to show this little bit of vulnerability in front of her people. <sighs> But now, it is time for the Hydro Archon to hmm. show you her courage and resolve. Okay, fair. Respect. I, Farina, will use this trial to show the world the true meaning of justice. And I am so curious how she defines the true meaning of justice. I really want to know. This time, I will protect mm. you. What does that mean? That sounds very ominous and cryptic and I don't think I like it. Applaud and rejoice. One of the most outrageous okay. and fantastical arcs known to the opera epicles is now unfolding before your eyes. You know, I, I actually don't doubt it, but like that makes me a little nervous. Mark my words. Wow. This shall be one of the most exhilarating and brilliant shows ever to grace the stage of Fontaine. Ooh. The trial of the Hydro Archon, Fosalor, will now... Oh my gosh, okay. I mean, this this is gonna be something. This is gonna be really Woo something. Woohoo! Yeah! Let's go! Oh, now we're making history. Yeah, now we're talking!
Duncan, man, bring on the drama. Let's <laughs> like <laughs> SMH. Why does it feel like Farina just took over the whole thing? Because but, she did. Come on, didn't she just get forced to stand trial for her crimes? Yep, and she's she's flipped it around. <laughs> also, even though she's still acting super dramatic, she is taking this seriously this time, right? I mean, the thing is too. The irony in that is that I think she's been taking it seriously the whole time. We just haven't seen her. We just haven't seen her outwardly take things seriously, so it seems like she's not. But literally, like, from day one, I think she has been taking things seriously. All right, then. Who will be my opponent in this trial? Uh, me. I think. The court asks yeah? the prosecutor to please take the stand. That me? Oh, man. I'm really sorry about all of this. Is that so? Uh. Very well. Then please speak, witness of Tivat, my accuser and fated oh, opponent. Man, I feel really bad. <laughs> we were so close. I know. Yeah, we were so close to getting her to tell us the truth, and it still turned out like this in the end. But it's 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 more than that. It's not just the fact that we were so close to getting her to tell the truth. It's like. We're doing kind of a, an awful thing. Again, I, I completely understand why we are doing this, but it feels really horrible because she was vulnerable with us. She was vulnerable with us of her own volition. She was vulnerable with us in a way that she probably has not ever been with anybody else. And now we've turned around and essentially like betrayed her trust, which feels really bad. It's okay, though. Uh, as long as we can defeat Farina in court, we'll still have a chance to figure everything out. But will she be as receptive towards us? Oh, I love that. We both turn and walk in opposite directions. Oh, the framing of that is really nice. Order! Order! So, please allow me to ask as a final question mm. before the trial begins. Okay, yes. Just how much work did you do to force me onto this stage? Uh, she is, this is why I feel even worse now. Like, uh, she's, I, I feel like she's essentially asking, like, how much of our exchange just now was real and how much of it was, like, fabricated, you know? Like, were, you, were, were we being authentic and genuine towards her or were we just lying to her face? Well, we did do a lot of prep after <sighs> that day. Yeah. I can go over the tasks assigned to the Spina di Rosula since they were rather straightforward and easy. All right, Navia, you have the stage. Navia, the president of the Spina di Rasula. That is her, that is she. Most of the people who participated in the disturbance this morning were my subordinates. Oh, okay. That's they right. They changed into plain clothes and came to the opera house as regular audience members, mm. waiting for the perfect opportunity to incite insurrection against you. That's right, yep, that was part of the plan. The people's resentment against their Archon has been building as more and uh, more of the prophecy yeah. is fulfilled. Yeah. A spark was all we needed to turn smoldering anger into a flame. And it's sad because, again, like, we've seen how much Farina does care about her people. And that must just be such an awful feeling to have them turn against her when she's been doing so much for them. Moreover, according to our understanding and analysis of you... When something like that occurred, you would likely flee the scene and head to Poisson by yourself. Dang, dude, we're like psychoanalyzing her and everything. Jesus. So, we arranged for a second group to lie in wait there. Are those the people that, oh, those are the people that, oh, man. So it was, it was like, it really does feel like it was all staged so from her perspective. The ones who scoured the settlement for me were also from the Spina. Yes, that is correct. But I swear to God, when we were talking in the boat, like that was, it was, that was genuine. Okay, I swear. And their goal was to force you to step into the giant magic box. Uh... So you may personally participate in the greatest magic performance in all of Fontanian history. Uh, it was really and bad. That's right. That house was a magic box rather than someone's residence. I was wondering, I was like, I feel like I've never seen this thing before in Poisson. <laughs> How the heck did this thing get here? And that's why that's why it turns out is a magic box. As the super ultimate version of the setup that I used when I first performed at the Opera Epicles. Mm-hmm. The volume of the box was increased by a whole order of magnitude. Yeah. And the distance it traversed was the entire gap between Poisson that's and Erinias. Pretty crazy. It's cargo, of course. Wait, is that why it was shaken though? <laughs> so like actually nothing bad was happening. It was just shaking because it was being transported. It was an archon instead of a human. Dang. My thanks, Farina. 
Without your help, we could never have pulled off such an extraordinary performance. Oh, God. Ah. Uh, you're welcome. Alright, oh, yes. And this uh it's and it sucks because like again she's been so alone in all of this and this must just like amplify that feeling of loneliness. Like everyone is just like against her right now. Of course, this performance was only made possible with father's support. The House of the Hearth spent a mm. massive amount of labor in Mora to pull this off. Yeah, I bet. That's a that's a that's a ways to go. We had to select a location, construct the giant magic box, dig a tunnel, and mm. open up a path through the water. Yeah, that's it pretty was crazy. a lot of work for all of us. It does seem like a lot of work. So, in other words, the earthquake yeah. that we felt within the giant yep. magic box was just a normal tremor from the transportation of the whole house? Yeah, that's, uh, yep, that's correct. <laughs> that's right. It wasn't a sign of another disaster to come. Yeah, sorry about that. We, uh, we might have deceived you back there. It was, um, I promise we had good intentions. <laughs> then, I can guess Nervilette and Cloran's parts. Uh-huh, yeah. You gathered a crowd. Prepared a stage and made sure that the champion duelist would be immediately ready for a fight. Ah, uh, yeah. Also, that as soon as I appeared on the stage, the trial may commence without a hitch. Am I right? You are correct. Yes, that is correct. Oh man, this is gonna this is gonna be interesting though. Like as much as I feel terrible <laughs> that we're doing this to her, it's gonna be really interesting. Well, Clorand, I must commend you for your courage. Yeah. Only the most outstanding champion duelist in all of Fontaine would accept a duel with an Archon without flinching. Clorand is a badass woman, dude. I freaking love Clorand. Like, she just does not give an F. <laughs> she will Thank duel you. anybody. Anybody and everybody. I don't mean that she doesn't give an F, like, at all, period, about anything, but I mean, she just is, she just feels so badass, you know what I mean? It's like any, she's up to any challenge, is what I'm trying to say, As it seems for like. for you, Traveler, I suppose your role was to keep me distracted with conversation once you found me in Poisson. <sighs> You'd make sure that I didn't notice anything amiss before revealing yourself as my prosecutor once we'd arrived onto the stage. No, you guessed wrong. Okay, I hope that we're going to clarify that we were being completely genuine when we were trying to make sure that she was okay. Oh? My mission was to give you one last chance. We hoped that you'd share your secret with us before the magic box arrived onto the stage. <laughs> Is that so? Then I suppose I must have missed my final chance. <laughs> I, I mean, I'm glad that we clarified it to some extent, but I feel like it still does make it look like we were trying to manipulate an answer out of her in a way that is probably not very conducive to her trusting us or feeling positive about us, and I, for that, I feel bad. <sighs> mm. It's fine. It matters not. What's done is done. It's not fine, though. It's not, because I feel like... I feel like it's really significant that she was about to have somebody that she trusted enough to confide in, and now we've just ruined it. The stage is already set, so there's no reason to disappoint the audience. Let's see this trial through to the very end. All right. Uh, okay, here we go. The only thing we can do now is to judge the Hydro Archon. Well, this is certainly going to be fascinating, I will say that. Still, I can't help but be a little bothered by that conversation earlier. What did Farina want to say to me right before we arrived on the stage? Well, now we're probably never gonna know because we... We done gone and effed it up, eh, eh, Ron? Madam Prosecutor, please allow me to pass this along. Ooh, Madam Prosecutor, that's kind of fancy, this though. This is a document that Miss Charlotte applied for and received oh. permission to share with you during the trial. Oh! According to her, huh? we should speed up the proceedings. We got some evidence? Oh. Huh? Oh, oh, oh. Charlotte wanted to give us something? Charlotte was cooking! Oh, too. Hey, Charlotte! Hi! Yeah, bro! <laughs> I love how we're like prosecutors and we're just like waving to someone in the crowd. Imagine if lawyers stood up and did that IRL. You just see an attorney stand up and say, hey! Hi, Mom! Hi, Dad! Thanks for coming to the trial! <laughs> oh, let Paimon see. Uh, 
isn't this the exclusive oh. interview that she did with us before? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. She finished it, huh? Oh, I, w I, I don't know how this is going to be relevant to the trial, but I guess we'll see. Wait. Then that means this document is a perfect timeline of oh. everything that's happened ever since we stepped foot in Fontaine. Okay. So yeah. In other words, we can refer to this anthology of evidence mm. every time we want to use something from our journey as evidence okay. for an argument. Okay, yo, let's go. It's a super practical gift. I never would have thought of using it this way. Let's go, Charlotte. Let's information in it. Just think of it as a refresher, all right? Perfect. Let's go. I'm, I definitely need a refresher, man. It's in the very first duels you took part in at the opera house. That's one for the history books, all right. A lot of things have happened. A lot of things have happened. This is going to be very, very helpful. Okay. Became Lenny's attorney. I didn't think that you'd wind up. Uh, yeah, that's right. Vache. Child got convicted. The harbinger. She's the knave. Yep. Person. That's Her right. Instinct must mean the fortress of Meripede was almost destroyed e that's right. in a single day. We remember that. But according to Monsieur Nuvia, you did that's right. The whale in the dream. Child, I nearly lost Navia my and then T with N. Okay. All right. That's right. The prosecution and the defense are both in position. Go. Oh, okay. The trial oh, okay. Shall now begin. Oh, I got the the brain juices are flowing. Ah. Oh, all right. Let's get it. Let's get this. And nervy lads, there's no need to repeat all the unimportant <laughs> legal leads. Just fast forward to the part where the prosecution lays out my offenses. As the defendant and, and the, the lead, lead actress. actress of this performance, I still haven't even been informed of my supposed guilt in all of this. I like how she refers. I like how she refers to herself as the lead actress because, again. Pretty much throughout the time, th probably throughout like most of her existence, she has been acting. Of course, it is only natural for humans to struggle to understand the actions of a god. However, you will need more than that to convict me of a crime. Don't worry, I got more stuff where that came That's from, all true. right? But my charge here is unrelated to your conduct as an archon. Oh! Instead, what is our charge? I would like to charge you as a fraud <gasps> who's never been the archon in the first place. Oh! <laughs> Wait. Oh! oh -ho -ho! Lady Farina's a fraud? Dang! Hey, I came here thinking that we were going to try the Hydro Archon for forsaking her duty. Yeah, I that's that right. uh. She's not our archon at all. <laughs> you know, this is like okay. I mean, like, like, oh my god, this is this this is crazy. But at the same time, I'm not completely surprised because, I, like, like I said, it was very strange to me that she did not try to defend herself when Arlecchino tried to assassinate her. Um, and I've also I've I've spoken about this before, but like the the artwork for this Masquerade of the Guilty kind of shows Farina at center stage, but then we see like really big Nervalette in the background, and it always kind of made me feel like maybe maybe Nervalette is gonna be kind of like stepping into a new role, and Farina is sort of like for show, like that's why the spotlights were on her. That's that's kind of what I how I interpreted that. So I'm not necessarily surprised by this, but oh my god, it is still wild. Charge accepted. Oh, oh man. Okay. Lady Farina, do you plead guilty to the charge? <sighs> she was not expecting that. Lady Farina. I plead not guilty. How can I be guilty? Well, I, I well, let's explain there it. There is no way that I, Fosalor, otherwise known as Ooh. Farina de Fontaine, a member of the Seven and the Regina of all waters. Oh, that was so cool. Fontaine, could be anything other than your true Archon. That was so cool what they just did there where she like was facing herself and then it formed like the whole person. Ooh, that was yeah. so cool. Even though Lady Farina can be rather eccentric, isn't it going too far to doubt her very identity? Ooh, I'm so curious. Yeah, I've never questioned her identity either. Sure, Lady Farina can be super irresponsible, but, but what grounds does that prosecutor have to make such a huge claim. Yeah, I'm sure we've got something, but are we correct is the question. Are we correct? Are we like partially correct? Are we like, is there some, well, because they've also no, they've also mentioned that the, she doesn't have the gnosis on her too, which is interesting, but I guess not every archon has the gnosis on them. I, mm. I 
have cause to believe that common sense will prevail in okay. this case. Okay. All right. Many of the members of the audience have known me as the Hydro Archon ever since they were born. There would be no fooling their memory. Oh, and that would add oh, that would add such another interesting layer to all of this because again, if she truly has just been acting as the Hydro Archon, it it it, it again adds like a whole extra layer to this whole like how much of it is real? How much of it is false? Like, the the world is her stage. Like, how much of it has been a performance? Has the very existence of her as the Hydro Archon just been a performance this entire time? Oh. Ah. <laughs> Even the Oratrice has decided to show me its favor. Well. Are you sure you want to commit to a charge that will never be upheld? Hey, wouldn't this, hey, you know, the Oratrice has been swayed if before, you okay? to drop the case, I can promise you as the God of Justice. That you will not have to face trial for making a false accusation. Okay. We will treat everything that's happened as a dramatic spectacle and move on with our lives. Mm. What do you say to that? I refuse. Uh, an argument with near impossible odds, huh? We'll take it. <laughs> we have to not only refute Farina's claims, but also overturn the long-held beliefs of the people. Not gonna be easy, but the people only see you as their Archon because that's their long-held belief, yup. Well, I tried to give you the chance to surrender. If you must mm -hmm. persist, then let me ask. If you believe I'm not the Archon, then what manner of being do you think I am? Oh, oh, this is so interesting. And like, this is going to be tough for us because it's like, again, imagine you've held a belief your entire life and then someone's like, actually, it's like, freaking imagine that your entire life you have believed that all Kiwis are green on the inside. And then someone comes up to you and says, actually, kiwis are pink on the inside. You'd be like, what? Huh? And if I was not the Archon, then how did I manage to live for over 500 years? Well, no, okay, that is, that is a good question. You do make a point there. I didn't really think about that one. Let me cook. Let me cook. I've got to think carefully. What do we know to be special about Farina exactly? <laughs> Oh god, okay, alright. Some sort of curse! Okay, this one seems applicable. Some sort of curse. First of all, you may be a member mm. of another long-lived race, which yep. would allow you to naturally possess an extended lifespan. Mm -hmm. And second of all, Detective Paimon's on the case. Wasn't the case, there could be other ways to extend your life. Such as a curse. Ooh. <laughs> Who gave you that idea? Was it the knave? You'd seem hmm. so low as to use a harbinger's words against me. It doesn't matter who gave us the information. What matters is the veracity of the claim. A curse. I once thought it possible that the aura of an archon mm. might naturally resemble a type of curse. Ooh, I'm so curious what the curse is and who cursed her. But in light of this claim, Perhaps what I sensed was not your divinity, ah, but a curse a after. curse. You sensed it too, huh, Nervalette? Okay. So, Farina, instead of an Archon, could you just be a cursed human? Lady Farina is actually a human? Dang, I'm actually surprised they're questioning it this quickly. Well, it is true that it's extremely difficult to tell humans and gods apart just mm. by looking at them. It's not impossible. Okay, yep, thank you. Contemplative audience member seems like he has a very measured take here. Oh, the Oratrice, uh, <laughs> kind of tipping in our favor, oh, eh? Don't start celebrating too early now. Even if I have been carrying a curse, like you said, how does that prove I, that I am merely a human being? I mean, okay, that's true. She could be like a cursed archon. <laughs> Besides, everyone knows that the main difference between a human and a god is the possession of authority. Gods can do what humans cannot. That's why they're worshipped as gods. Okay. For centuries, manifestations of my authority have served the nation of Fontaine. All right. One need only to turn their eyes towards the Oratrice Mechanique de Analyse Okay, and that is a good point. Opera House, or consider the endemidium that is used in every aspect of life. Okay, but could that still be a result of the curse? 
Wait, that one trial proved the opposite. Farina actually has no control over the Oratrice at all. Oh yeah, that's right. Did she, didn't she? did she create it though? Like how could she have created something like that if she doesn't have some sort of power, some sort of ability? But yes, we did see that she doesn't actually control it. Child's conviction. You tried to reference the Oratrice. But weren't you as confused as all the rest mm -hmm. of us when the Oratrice yep. declared Child to be guilty without any proof? Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you should have come up with a good explanation for that by now. Dang, Paimon sounded kind of angry when she was asking this question, which honestly relatable. I was also mad when Child got declared gr guilty with no proof. Didn't I make myself clear at the time? The decisions of the gods are naturally difficult for humans to comprehend. There is no need mm. to provide an explanation. Kind of backtracking a little bit there. Kind of backtracking a little bit there, Farina. Lady Farina, I believe a reminder of your current circumstances is in order. Yeah, you got to give us an explanation. You can't just say, oh, you can't understand because you're not a god. <laughs> While the court is in session, uh -huh. the principles of justice and the law must come before all else. Mm -hmm. While mm -hmm. you are an archon, you are also first and foremost the defendant in this trial. Yes. You will prove yourself unable to defend against the prosecution's charges if you continue hmm. to withhold vital information against the rules of the court. Oh, dang, Nervalette is laying down the law. I never thought you'd use that kind uh, of rhetoric against me. Oh, yeah, but it does make me feel bad, though, because I feel like... I feel like even though she's never been fully vulnerable with Nervalette. I do feel like Nervalette is probably one of the people she considers to be somewhat of a close friend. So this is probably especially painful for her to go through coming from Nervalette. That was no trick of rhetoric, Lady Farina. I've merely reiterated the rules of the court. Mm -hmm. Rules that all should respect and follow. And I mean, again, you know, it's it's Nervalette's job to be fair and impartial, but it's still, I mean, all of this, again, still probably really hurts, especially because I think that Nervalette's probably one of the closest people to her. <laughs> so, you neither knew why Child was declared mm. guilty, nor did you understand the structure and operations of the Oratrice. Mm-hmm. Instead of having been created by you, the manifestations of authority Dang. you mentioned have been made by the real Hydro Archon, haven't they? Oh, ho, ho. Oh, Paimon is... Oh, my God. Paimon is actually just laying it down. The real Hydro Archon. Well, now you're really losing me. It is true that I did not know why the Oratrice gave out a guilty verdict that day. Okay. But the Oratrice handed out that verdict unilaterally. Okay. And it has been operating independently ever since it was first created. Mm-hmm. Okay. You yes. Can't, you can't argue that just because a divine creation is flawed, that the god behind it must also be no okay. god at all. I mean, that's a fair point. That's valid. <sighs> she's still throwing out all kinds of excuses. Seems like she's confident that we won't be able to produce proof that uh -huh. she has no power over the Oratrice. Oh, uh, ho, ho, but wait. Uh, sure, we can put the oratrice aside for now. But then, Miss Farina, could you give us a brief demonstration of your power as an archon? Oh, go, putting her on the spot. My power as an archon. There are many ordinary citizens in the audience. How can I just uh, demonstrate the formidable power of Okay, an now archon? we're really getting somewhere. This is what I've been waiting for. This is what if I've been waiting for. This is a concern. I'm prepared to extend my protection hmm. to the audience. Oh, man. Um, you don't need to go that far. We are really putting her on the spot. A brief demonstration of your power over Hydra should be quite harmless. Surely an Archon can at least match the, c the capacities of a human with a vision. I... Uh, yeah, how do you explain that? Hmm? Well, yeah, we've, we've never seen her, like, use her powers powers quote unquote before aren't you the hydro archon or is it that you can't even wield the power yeah. of hydro much less the authority of a god yeah, i think i think i think we might have her indemnidium. i think we might have her here this, it's all because of indemnidium all archons derive their power from the faith of the people and i've converted the people's faith in justice into indemnidium Okay, I mean, she sounds like she's really reaching here. She sounds like she's squirming. Thus did I give up all of my divine power to provide everyone with energy for their daily lives. 
Have you ever seen a more magnanimous god? Wow, she's really playing it up. <laughs> Isn't that a huge stretch? Ah, uh, they don't believe her, though. Yeah, no matter how generous an Archon can be, how could they give up all their power? Mm. Can a god with no power even still be called a god? Interesting question. <laughs> Oh, dang, oh, it seems like the Oratrice like is, uh, not tipping in her favor. Hey, come now, everyone. Please don't stare at me as if I was a liar. Well... I'm still the same Farina you knew, right? The one that you loved. Uh. Shouldn't you want to believe in me? And this is all so interesting, but at the same time, I can't help but feel bad for her. To believe me. Mm. If what the prosecutor said is true, she really has committed a grave offense. Uh, I'm. Sh I mean, I, there, there is absolutely going to be a valid reason for all Did of this, she though. Deceive all of us, and all of our parents and grandparents too, and then all of our ancestors, ever since they were born. And it's sad because, again, I think that deception absolutely serves a purpose, but it seems like it's it's not something that she can just share with the general public. So they're all going to hate and condemn her because they don't know the full reason behind all of this. Enough. That's enough. Okay. Tell me then, if I'm not the real Hydro Archon, then who is? I am. If you have no evidence of another Hydro Archon's existence, mm. nor can you find anyone who can back up their claim to be okay, such, fair. then what grounds have you to say that I'm not actually the real deal? I mean, I think our points are valid, but as for who the actual Hydro Archon is, now that's a different question. She came up with yet another argument. Uh, how can we refute her now? Seems like she really doesn't want to give up. Mm-hmm. If we can't prove that she isn't the Archon, we can try to prove that she is just human. And if she's only human... Oh ho ho! Alright, hold on, let me cook! Let me cook, let me cook! Alright, okay, we're getting, we're getting there, man! We're gonna try every single one until we get it! <laughs> it has been established that all Fontanians can dissolve in water from the primordial sea. Yes. And that means... Uh -huh. Since you insist on claiming to be a god and not a human, then there's a method oh. that you can use right here and now to eliminate all suspicions of you being the latter. Bro, I, I, okay, I, I thought that maybe we were gonna go here, but like, I, at the same time, I didn't think we were gonna go here. Miss Navia, please apply to serve as a temporary attorney for the prosecution before uh. addressing the court. Though you act in partnership with the prosecutor, you must still adhere to proper procedure. Okay, yep. Yeah, I mean, that's fair. That's fair. He has to be, again, he has to be impartial. I'm super sorry, Monsieur Chief Justice. I swear this really will be the last time. <laughs> Classic Navia, dude. Navia and speaking out of turn in the courthouse. Name a more iconic duo. Now, I've brought some seawater from Poisson. Oh, oh man. A massive blood struck the area not long ago. Taking many lives. Oh, God. Okay, I really didn't think we were going to go here. Including those of some of my closest friends. Uh, so, Miss Farina, uh, would you dare to touch? Oh, uh, come on! This is really harsh. Th okay, this is this is really harsh. Okay, all right. We okay. Are to believe that you are indeed the real Hydro Archon. Uh, Touching the seawater would have no effect on you. All it should do is strengthen your case. Uh, oh man. Okay. But all right. If you don't dare to touch this, it, this is kind of this is kind of harsh. We proved the reverse. Ah, uh, but I also understand why we need to be harsh, oh, and but I may I remind you that after the disaster at Poisson, nobody wants to see any more people dissolve. I uh, I feel so conflicted right now. The boulder feels conflicted. I do hope you'll act prudently and choose the simpler path of admitting guilt. Mm. Navia from the Spina di Rasula. The Spina has governed Poisson for many years. I guess her suggestion is valid. Mm. Yeah. If Lady Farina is indeed just a human, uh, she's probably Fontanian like all the rest of us. Uh, Would she really dare to try? Oh, Lord. Oh, man. Okay. The climax is fast approaching. Ah, uh, Farina! Lady Farina, this test has been unilaterally proposed by the prosecution. <laughs> As it falls outside the realm of standard court proceedings, you possess the right to decline participation. Ah, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, oh, man. 
Ah, uh, what's she gonna do? Well, of course he had to tell her that. But refusing to participate is basically uh. the same as a confession of guilt. <gasps> She's just staring at the water without saying a single word. It really does seem like she's quite terrified of it. Ooh. That could only mean. Yeah. What's going on? Is she really planning to... Uh, uh, that's not what we thought she would... What's gonna happen? <gasps> oh, I'm so curious! Okay, okay. Due to the inherent do risk it? of the test, Lady Farina, you may... She's sticking the hand in, man. Uh... Ah, uh, okay. She actually did it, but I'm I'm assuming she's good. But what does that mean? <sighs> Is she not? I, I'm fine. Look, look at me, everyone. Mm. My hand is still here. She did not I seem. Been dissolved. She did not seem. To be very certain that she was gonna be okay. Will you believe me now? How I fascinating! Really am your archon. I'm nothing like a normal human who would fall apart as soon as they touch this water. Dang. Really? Was this not the most obvious thing in the world? Great voice acting too. Oh man. Miss Seedwing, if you are present, <gasps> Miss Seedwing, please come forward and attend to the defendant. Oh, <laughs> Seedwing, Seedwing too. Don't oh be my gosh. It'll just take a few seconds. We got the whole entire squad is Risley here too. Mm -hmm. Okay. That should be enough. Uh, 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 uh. Please announce the results uh -huh. of your evaluation to the court, Miss Seedween. Ho? Oh? As everyone doubtlessly saw, Miss Farina was displaying symptoms of hyperventilation and flushed skin. These indicate that mm -hmm. she was experiencing the adverse effects of exposure to oh. primordial seawater. The extent to which she was affected is the same as other humans when exposed to primordial oh. seawater of a similar concentration. Okay, and I thought she was just unaffected. I thought that um, I thought that her uh, like 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 the outward sort of symptoms that she was displaying. I thought that that was just a result of her feeling like panicked or anxious. Thank you, Miss okay. Queen. Lady Farina. You may return to the defendant's stand. Well, there you go, and there you have it. Wait, what did she just say? I didn't get dissolved. Shouldn't that be enough to prove my innocence? Did we, like, lower the concentration so that you wouldn't get dissolved immediately if you well, touch it? considering your tendency to run from your problems, uh. we did originally prepare a direct sample of the seawater around Poisson. Okay, I'm assuming we must have diluted However, it. After mm -hmm. extensive discussion, we exchanged it for a sample that is not concentrated enough ah, to dissolve an okay. actual human. After all, on the off chance that something entirely unexpected uh, might occur. Yeah, dang. That's pretty crazy that she was, I mean, she was really willing to die on this hill. That's thats kind of crazy. Again, I, I am so excited to learn more about Farina because it's like, why? Like, she was willing to get dissolved. That's that's how strong her resolve is. We don't want anyone else to lose their life to the sea. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so out of regard for Farina's life, you secured a low ah, concentration okay. sample and asked the head nurse to serve as an expert witness. Mm. It's a great thing that the direct sample wasn't actually used. Yeah, it's, uh, and again, that's crazy that she was willing to do that. I, to I go to that extent. Believe. You... But what's really going on here? Farina can't have not known the consequences of touching that water as a human. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's crazy. She was willing to touch it anyways. This is too unlike how she usually acts. Unless it's actually more important for her to keep up her facade than to save her own life. Yeah, why is the facade so important? But hadn't she, uh, or sorry, but hadn't she given up on everything a long time ago? Listen to me. Listen to me, everyone. Please don't give me such cold and disdainful looks. Hmm. What happened just now didn't prove a single thing. Oh, this is so fascinating. How can you conclusively prove that an Archon can't also be affected by the primordial seawater? 
And honestly, her rebuttals are like, they're they're not bad. I mean, that's true. How do we know? Do, oh, okay, I swear to God, if Zhongli walks out here and like sticks his hand. But then Zhongli is not Fontanian. <laughs> so I actually don't know. How can you conclusively prove that an Archon can't be affected by primordial also, seawater? Also, How do we if know? I was really just a human, why would I dare to just put my hand in that kind of water? <laughs> Ooh. Oh. They have lost faith. Not even a word. Everyone, anyone, just listen to me. I swear, I really am your Archon. Why is it so important? Why is it so crucial? To the point of tears. And every single person has lost faith in her. Oh, I feel for her, man. I don't think anything she says at this point will sway anyone. Yeah. The odds are just too stacked against her now. I mean, she has made some valid points, but at the same time, I feel like at this point, like between the prophecy and between like what we've shown, I think people really are just starting to lose faith in her. And it's easier to sway them, I think, because of what's been happening with the prophecy. With all the things that have been said, Paimon doesn't think there's any way left for Farina to win. Yeah, but it, I mean, is she done? What, what, does she have something else up her sleeve? I believe the time for arguments and presentation of evidence has come to an end. If there are no objections, we will move on to the final judgment. What's the Oratrice gonna do? Oh, God. And she seems so distressed by the fact that it's, it's coming to an end. It seems like it's over for her. I don't think anything oh. she says at this point will sway you to just against her now. Oh? Oh, what? In my capacity huh? as Chief Justice, I shall now render judgment on Farina's misrepresentation of herself as the Archon of Fontaine. Oh. As a human who knowingly deceived her fellow citizens, oh. Farina is... Everyone turning away from her and she's just left guilty. alone in the dark. Oh, and then it shatters. Oh. Ooh. How fascinating. This we looks just like the prophecy. Cardinal to render the final verdict on the charges. Wow, that's that is so interesting because it looks just like the prophecy. She's not she's not alone in the literal sense right now, but figuratively she is left alone sitting on the throne in tears. Wow. I love that parallel. According to the judgment of the Oratrice Mechanique d'Analyse Cardinal, Farina is... Uh... <coughs> huh? Hmm? Well, what's wrong? What's the Oratrice's verdict? Did the Oratrice just... Declare Farina to be innocent it wouldn't be the first time this freaking Oratrice effed up the verdict. No, the Oratrice also displays a guilty verdict. Uh -huh. Okay. Isn't that correct then? Oh, yeah. Okay, uh, yeah. However, the exact wording of the verdict is thus. Okay. The Hydro Archon, guilty. Okay. To be punished via. Oh! The I mean, I... I don't even know what to say. That's actually one of the available sentences. I, has that ever happened? It was just a myth. Oh my god. And I thought... I thought that the Oratrice just rendered judgment. I thought it was up to Nervolette to determine the actual sentencing. The one and only time the death sentence has been handed out at the court. Oh. It's been given to the very person we've worshipped as the god of justice? What an unexpected twist. And the very person who created the Oratrice. Farina's been sentenced oh to my God. death by the Oratrice? We I just uh, want to the trial to show her the seriousness of things so she tell us the truth. I can't believe it. Oh my I God. This quickly. I don't know why. Like, I, like I, I literally watched the trailer 
and and there's literally a line in the trailer that says sentence to death but for some reason it just like it wasn't like a thought that oh my god this outcome is indeed quite strange oh according to fontaine's current definitions of justice as well as its recommendations for criminal sentences uh, oh is this sentence really appropriate for the crimes that have been I, committed? I, I mean, I don't think so. Yeah. Seems kind of harsh. Yeah, what the what the frick, man? Vashay murdered like what? What like what? Like 10, 20 percent of the population? <laughs> Probably not that much, but he he murdered a lot of people. What's more strange is instead of Farina, the Oratrice rendered judgment on the Hydro Archon. That's a good point. And the thing is, we've established that she's not the Hydro Archon. At least it seems like she's not the Hydro Archon. She's just playing the role of the Hydro Archon. That is interesting. Indeed. I didn't even think about that. Not only is Farina's sentence overly excessive. Yeah. The very point of our trial today was also to prove that Farina has yeah. never been the Hydro Archon in the first place. So what does that, what does that mean? But now, the Oratrice seems to have deliberately invoked the title of the Hydro Archon. What does this oh, mean? I don't know, Nerfalite. You're supposed to know these things. You're the justice man. D oh, wait, I, what? Um, excuse me. Oh? If I may interrupt. From an A public speaking arc? Let's go. Is the trial still going? Well, I mean, it kind of just ended, uh, and it sounds like we need to murder. The Hydro Archon. We're not really sure who that is right now, but Fremine. uh huh, you finally made it. I assume uh, this means you've completed your mission. What was his mission? Mm -hmm. Any mission father assigns to me will always be top priority. Okay. What is uh with some help from the other Fatui, Fremine brings a stone slate. <gasps> I'm so excited to piece this together. I looked everywhere and finally found it at the bottom of the sea. It took me a long time mm. to get around some dangerous stretches Dang. of water. Yo, Fremenay coming in so clutch. But has the trial already concluded? Uh. Then doesn't that mean I've come too well. late? Well. Oh no. Father will be disappointed in me. Can we use retrospective evidence? Question mark. Uh, don't worry, the mystery hasn't been resolved yet. It's still not too late for you to sh for you to shine. Yo, okay, it's not it's not too late to sway fates. Thank you. For Dang, your it's hard huge, work, Mr. Fremine. Please allow me to review the record left on the slate. Yeah, I, I don't know how to interpret this. I think it was this Egeria, and I don't, I don't know who that is in in the middle. Traveler. I believe that you have already seen the other existing slates. Mm -hmm. We'd like you to come here and confirm their contents. Mm. Yes. Huh? So what do you see? What is it? This looks like... The previous Hydro Archon releasing her divine power, turning the Oceanids into human beings. <gasps> Wait a minute! Wait, that's so f Wait, okay, okay, so, so, the people of Fontaine are originally Oceanids, but then when they hit the water, they turn back into Oceanids? I believe I've now made sense oh. of the Hydro Archon's crime. It has to do with Fontaine's lost history. So interesting! Huh? Isn't the Hydro Archon just guilty of deceiving her people? Oh. oh, wait, no, that's Farina, and we've already proven that she's not the Hydro Archon. Why did she do that, though? Was was the previous Hydro Archon lonely? And that's why she turned Oceanids into people? Like, why? Uh, so when you say Hydro Archon, do you mean the real Hydro Archon we've been kind of talking about? In truth, everything that uh. you've encountered in Fontaine up until this point can be traced back to the contents mm. of these stone slates. Mm -hmm. However... I'm uncertain as to how much sense they currently make to you. Hmm. An association between the contents of the slates and the events in real life. Okay. Uh, Let's try to recall the contents of the other three stone slates. Paimon will do her best to help you. I think I remember them. them. Yeah, I think I remember. 
We had like repenting for our sin and then we had the Farina like in, in the water in, in kind of like almost like a fetal position, not exactly a fetal position, but like hugging her knees kind of. And then we had her sitting on the throne. On the throne. Uh, when you have finished verifying all the stone slates, the truth behind the prophecy shall be revealed and all of Fontaine will flood. Great. Fantastic. <laughs> the first stone slate describes what you just said. Mm. It seems to show the previous Hydra Archon using her divine power, and then the Oceanids turn into humans. That's so interesting, and I don't know how I feel about that, because if every Fontanian is actually just an Oceanid, it's like, if they touch the water, they're just refer they're just returning to their original form, like they're reverting back to an Oceanid, but I just, I don't know how I feel about that. Is that right? I don't know. Does that mean that Fontanians are transformed to Oceanids? Like on a moral level, is, oh, is that right? I wasn't expecting that. But if Oceanids can turn into humans, then perhaps this process can be reversed as well. Hmm. Yeah. It's that. This is this is a tough one because at the same time, it's like, again, I, I'm I'm trying to figure out how I feel about it on a moral level because it's like at the same time they are now people and they're people who have their own lives and who care about other people and probably have families and loved ones. So it doesn't seem right that just because they were Oceanids, like it isn't, it doesn't seem right to shrug it to shrug it off and be like, oh, well they were Oceanids, so it's fine if they all turn back into Oceanids. Um, anyways. The second stone slate shows Celestia floating yes. in the sky, and the Hydra Archon and her people worshiping it together. But the heavens still brought judgment down upon them. And it all makes sense now because from Celestia's point of view, I think this is exactly the sin. The sin was turning the Oceanids into people. And the reason why Celestia wants to like flood Fontaine is because they want like the natural order of things to return. They want the people to revert back to what they came from, which is the Oceanids. This must be the point when the Hydro Archon and the Fontanians were branded mm -hmm. with their original sin. Does this mean that the original sin and the Hydra yeah. Archon sin are the same thing? I think so. The third slate shows the Hydra Archon sinking into mm. the sea surrounded by many people. Yeah, that one, this one I'm not quite sure about. This one's still a little bit confusing. Like, how did Hydra Archon transform into Farina? Oh. That reminds Paimon. Didn't we also watch that happen to someone else? But then we also said that Farina's not the real Hydra Archon, so this part's a little bit fuzzy. Well, the fourth slate is the prophecy the Fontanians have been talking about. Mm hmm people dissolving into the sea, the Hydra Archon crying on her throne, and so on. Mm-hmm. And again, it's so interesting because we literally saw, like, this exact image in court just now. Fascinating. We didn't believe that such a crazy disaster could happen at first, did we? But after that incident, it was just a question of when yeah. and not if. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, the real events related to the prophecies on the prophecy slates. Okay. Uh, prophecy slate one. It seems to show the former Hydra Archon using divine power to turn Oceanids into people. Yes. Um, turns out that Fontanians can be dissolved by primordial sea water. I feel like, let's check this one. I feel like this one is, uh, ba -da -da -da, Hydra Archon guilty. Uh, this one seems pretty relevant. Let's check that out. We yeah. Know from the case of okay. the serial disappearances of young women, that hmm. Fontanians can be dissolved in primordial sea water. And yes. And the first stone slate tells us that long ago, the Hydro Archon used her power to turn Oceanids into humans. This yes. This might be the reason that Fontanians can dissolve. Mm-hmm. Yep, that makes sense. That makes sense. Okay, next one. It shows Celestia floating in the sky and the Hydro Archon and her people worshi worshiping it together, but the heavens still brought judgment down upon them. Now, this one... I'm assuming that this is probably linked to what we just learned about Farina. Yeah. Perhaps what is about to take place has all happened before. The true sin of the Hydro Archon that Nervilette mentioned, mm. and the original sin cast down on the people of Fontaine by Celestia, as recorded on the stone slates. Yep. Okay. That makes sense. And with each with each truth, we're getting closer and closer to flooding Fontaine. Um, it shows the Hydro Archon sinking into the sea, surrounded by many people. This one is a little bit confusing to me. I'm not quite sure what to make of this one. The uh, Navia fell into the primordial. The, the entrance is sealed. Is it could it could it have something to do with Nuvi's power? No. Okay, not Nuvi's power. 
Uh, no, it's probably not child. Let's let's check out Navia. Ah, okay. It's not as simple as falling into the sea. Mm. When Navia fell into the sea, yes, her consciousness was subjected to judgment. Mm -hmm. The stone slates show the people gathered around the Hydro Archon in the sea. Oh, judging the, the Hydro Archon, maybe. Oh, I didn't think about it like that. It shows a scene that is basically identical to that described in the prophecy circulating throughout Fontaine. Fontanians will eventually be dissolved into the sea, and the Hydro Archon will sit alone on her throne and weep. And this is also really interesting because it's like, again, like, what is Farina's role? Because we just saw that she is also affected by the primordial seawater, and yet she's supposed to be sitting alone on the throne at the end of it all. Very interesting. Nervalet's Prophecy power. From the stone slates found its way into society, but not many people believed it at first. Hmm. The mm -hmm. fortress of Meropede was nearly flooded with primordial seawater, yep. which we know can cause Fontanians to dissolve. Mm -hmm. It seems increasingly likely that the prophecy may come true. If yeah. we hadn't dealt with it in time, things could have gone very badly. Very true, very astute observations, Lumine. They'll dissolve into the primordial sea, but won't cease to exist. Mm. Their essence will yep. flow in the seawater, converge, and take the form of an Oceanid! Mm -hmm. The Hydro Archon was sentenced to death in court, shocking everyone present. Hmm. Perhaps this means that her sin was actually Fontaine's original sin. Ah, oh, this is I I love this image with Farina in the middle and like the lighting is so interesting with the, the Oratrice on this side and Nervalette on this side and she's in shadow and it's both in light. I love that. Navia fell into the water inside those ruins, and she nearly dissolved. Mm -hmm. She was surrounded by the people of Poisson in a court within her consciousness. Mm. And was forced to take part in a trial meant to make her stay. Mm -hmm. The eruption of the primordial sea at the fortress of Meripede was the surest sign that the prophecy was about yep. to come to pass no matter what. Yeah, that was crazy. I still remember that. Oh my god, that was crazy. The prophecy's contents can all be verified by recent events. Yeah. If we combine what we know together, loads of truth should come to light. Mm-hmm. Oh, nice! Spring go. Spring go, baby. Huh? Oh, Paimon gets it now! So that's how you can make sense of it! It all makes sense now. We finally have the missing piece of the puzzle, and boy did Fremenet come in clutch here. Like, this piece was so essential. But then it feels like we're going to have to share some truly shocking revelations. Yeah, so all of you guys in the audience, uh, you guys are actually Oceanids. Congratulations. Let's hear them. Congrats, everybody. The first slate reveals that Fontanians are not real humans. Congratulations, everybody. Incredible. Linny, did you hear that? Congrats! You guys are all Oceanid! Let's go! Oceanid hype! Uh, We're not real humans. That's probably kind of a shocking revelation. <laughs> all Fontanians were originally created by the late previous Hydro Archon, with Oceanids as their basis. Damn, yo, everybody in the audience is going through an identity crisis right now. The evidence for that can be found in... How only Fontanians could dissolve in primordial It all makes water. sense now. And how all the girls Vache dissolved were also turned into Oceanids. It makes sense now because I was just wondering the other day, I was like, why the heck is it only Fontanians that like turn into Oceanids and get dissolved in the primordial seawater? Like, is there something in their DNA, something in their genetic makeup? Like, why only them? It all makes sense now. And I love this from a writing perspective because it's very justified. Like, I thought it was going to be some weird thing like, oh, they have this, this one gene that makes you dissolve in the water. And I was gonna be like, I mean, okay, yeah, but I like this much better. Very well written. Oh, and according to Navia, when she was about to get dissolved, she also saw everyone mm -hmm. gathered around for a trial. All of them in the shape of Oceanid. They have returned to their original form, their original collective consciousness. Indeed. The second slate reveals that the crime of the Hydro Archon was her creation of Fontanians from Oceanids. Yeah, and it follows from the content of the first slate. That yep. she probably angered Celestia by creating humans without prior permission. Mm hmm. That could also explain why the Oratrice judged the Hydro Archon yeah. to be guilty. It's 
to account for that ancient sin. That makes sense. The Hydro Archon's true sin was creating us. What a mixed bag of emotions that must be, too. Because it's like, they've just outed Farina as potentially a fraud. But I have a feeling that she still has something to do with the Hydro Archon. So it's like, man, that must be a lot of feelings. Like, the Hydro Archon created you like you like these people exist because the hydro archon created them and yet it, it was a sin the hydro archon was never supposed to do that and yet after many hundreds of years the hydro archon's creations have turned mm. around to try to yeah judge the archon that's so the oh. the twists of history are often the oh it's all so good oh it's so good um as for the third slate i'm still convinced that it should come after the fourth slate yeah just like when Navia fell into the sea? I have, I, again, I have a feeling that it is in the correct order, but why? What's the so reasoning? Wouldn't it be trying to show the image of the Hydro Archon also falling into the sea once the prophecy has been fulfilled in the fourth slate? Maybe, maybe not. Uh, the fourth slate depicts the fulfillment of the prophecy as it's already widely known. In the end, the people will all be dissolved into the waters, mm. and only the Hydro Archon will remain weeping on her throne. Only then will the sins of the people of Fontaine be washed away. Mm-hmm. Did Paimon get all that right? Ah, uh, yeah, I think so. Good job, buddy. You've made some keen deductions. I must say, given how much you hmm. still don't know, it is impressive that you've already managed to connect Paimon, so many big brain, pieces of dude, the truth. big brain. However, while you were able to decode all the information mm -hmm. on the slates, they've also been etched with an additional oh. layer of hidden information using a different oh, yeah. power source. That's right, Nervalette did the little, like, bloop, 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 with his hand, and then the water was like, bloop, 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 bloop. When we were at the ruins, I tried to decipher the mm -hmm, hidden information yeah. recorded in the slates. But since we only had three slates at the time, I was unable to come to a full conclusion. Do it again, do it again. Now that the slate collection is complete, I shall make another attempt to decipher the narrative recorded within. If everything goes well, we should finally be informed of the unadulterated Ooh. truth. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well. Yeah. You getting anything? Yo, lay it on me. I I'm ready. I should share this truth not only with you, <gasps> but with all the people of Fontaine as well. Oh. I will try to briefly summarize it for you. Let's freaking go! Oh, I'm so excited. I've been waiting for this. Your hypotheses regarding the origin of Fontaineans mm -hmm. and the sin of the Hydro Archon were both correct. <laughs> In the Fontaine of old. The previous Hydro Archon sensed the yearning of ah. her Oceanid familiars for life on land. Okay. The Oceanids were enamored with the beauty and romanticism ah. of human beings, and wishing to have those experiences for themselves, mm. expressed to the Hydro Archon their desire oh, to become okay. of a similar kind. Okay. However, even though water as an element is intricately linked with the power of life, oh. the Hydro Archon, as one of the seven, did not possess the authority to create ah. a new form of human life. Okay. Not one to give in, she eventually found a way to create permanent humanoid bodies for her familiars by appropriating the power of this planet's primordial sea. Oh, ah, uh, okay. She poured primordial seawater into the Oceanid's blood vessels, oh. creating humanoid mimics in the process. Wow. But if Fontanians were to ever come into direct contact with water from the primordial mm -hmm. sea, the power within their bodies would escape these artificial restraints and return to the sea. Wow. As a result, their forms would collapse, and they would be reverted to their original Dang. forms as Oceanids. Dang. Of course, the oh. Hydro Archon never received permission oh. from the heavenly principles to create a new human race. That was so cool, too, with the raindrops falling and the Nervalette stuff. Oh, that's so cool. And thus, the Hydro Archon and all of her creations came to shoulder the original sin mm. of appropriating the power of the primordial sea. I see. Okay. That is the true history of how the people of Fontaine first Dang. came to Dang. That must be crazy to find out about yourself, like, in real time. <gasps> So you, uh, I, we were all Oceanids before we turned into human beings? Yeah, that's pretty wild. That's way too much information for me. <laughs> I think I'm just going to pretend <laughs> I never heard of you. Just block it out. Thing. 
Just block it out and keep pogging, my dude. Wait, but if that's the truth, we can't let the Hydro Archon be sentenced to death. After all, uh, uh, holy sin was creating us. Yeah. Oh, this adds such an interesting layer. This really might be too much information for your regular. I mean, days, yeah, it's a lot to process. But it does answer a lot of our questions. Ooh. Alas, your hypothesis regarding the third and fourth stone slates was mm. inaccurate. The slates' respective yeah. positions okay. so are, in fact, correct. So they are in the right order. What is the third slate supposed to represent then? I'm assuming this must be like whatever purpose Farina was created for. A key point Maybe? of the visual on the third slate is how all the individuals depicted in the water are humans rather than oceanids. Yeah. They have not been dissolved, which implies that the water depicted in this slate is not water from the primordial oh? sea. Oh. The nation of Fontaine is the nation of Hydro, as well as the nation of Trials and Justice. Instead of being the literal element, the water in the scene symbolizes judgment and justice. Oh, it's a prophecy. Like, I have a feeling that the actual water is still supposed to rise because that just makes sense for the original sin. But it's interesting how, like, the prophecy, the third and, floor, the third and fourth slate mimic what has happened just now. Like, Farina is at the center of all this judgment by her people and she's left crying on the throne. Just with, with, within this trial. You may also recall Navia's experience. When she fell into the sea, her consciousness was surrounded mm. by that of many others who intended to hold a trial to determine her fate. Mm -hmm. Therefore, the meaning of the third slate is <gasps> that the people of Fontaine shall try the Hydro <gasps> at the Court yeah, of yeah, Justice. No. <laughs> yes, it refers to our oh, present situation. Dang! Okay, yep. I was kind of wondering. I was like, it really kind of mimics what's happening now. But I, I'm assuming that, like, we. I mean, I, I'm assuming that there's still the impending doom of Fontaine flooding. <laughs> I think I'm following now. Mm. So, what you're saying is, even though we decided to put on this trial to avoid fulfilling the prophecy. Crazy, dude. Crazy. We literally just played right into the hands of fate. In truth. Everything we've done has happened exactly as the prophecy mm. foretold. So now it seems yeah. we're the ones making sure it comes true. Fate's a funny little bugger like that. Uh, what should we do? It feels like there's no way out of this. Oh. No matter what, the prophecy will be fulfilled. Mm. Is this what it feels like to be a prisoner of fate? Oh, and this, oh, this is, it's so nice to hear Clorand with that level of emotion in her voice because normally she's kind of a bit stoic. If that's the case, does that mean the scene in the fourth slate will also be fulfilled soon? I, I mean, it seems like it kind of already has. Traveler, I would like to point out another small fallacy in your deductions. Mm hmm. About the fourth slate. You probably thought that the eruption of primordial seawater beneath the fortress of Meripede served as the surest sign that the prophecy was about to come to pass, yes? Ah, uh, yes. However, I believe that rather than being a sure sign, that eruption could in fact only uh. be a small warning of something uh. far worse to come. Oh, God. As for the root cause of the catastrophe, uh. I believe you've already encountered it once I, before. I have? I have? Is it... Is it... Is it... Is it... In my dream, is it? Is it the whale in my dream? That's the literal only thing this I can think of. It's just a small warning of the things to come. We must find the root cause of the disaster. P okay. What? Okay, never mind. I, for some reason, I thought that. I, for some reason, I just thought that. Like, okay, yeah, massive whale. That seems like it could cause a flood, <laughs> but I don't think that's the case. Um, the root cause of the disaster. Uh, I'm a, I mean, I'm is it this one? Oh, the root cause of the disaster. Oh, the whale in the dream. Yeah. Wait. Oh, what was the whale? Okay. Reality. Okay. Yo, let's go. That's that makes sense. A true culprit. That could only be that thing inside the primordial sea, right? I gaslighted myself into thinking I was wrong. What is right? So it is the whale. Okay. The truth. The original sin, the trial, mm. and the root cause of the disaster. It's the whale! Oh, and how does child fit into all this? Oh, 
Oh, this is so interesting. Oh! Huh? Um. Um. Oh! Oh my god! He's what? How did he get here? Oh! Excuse me! What's so badass? Oh my god, how did it just like open a portal in the middle of the freaking courthouse? Oh! Oh, I don't have any Oh! Run away! Oh! Yeah, yeah. Oh! Is it? Ah! Oh my god! Why would you? Oh my god, dude. Oh my god, this is such a sick cutscene! Oh! I was so badass! What the heck? Oh! Oh my god! Did we- Is it got- Oh! No! Okay, it's not dead. It's just- Is it retreating? Yeah, get back in your hidey hole, buddy. Get back- Go back to the abyss, bro. Hi! Hello! Are you- Are you okay? You don't really look like you're okay. Are you good? You look kind of- You kind of, um- Isn't it not good for him to be- in foul legacy like that for so long are you uh, he didn't look very okay are you okay um okay so yeah that happened <laughs> holy jesus oh my god i, I mean I, that was crazy oh my god um i'd wager that it's also the one that child saw when he was young yeah i'm so curious how child fits into all of this also that whale design peak Peak, absolutely. So we've peak. met it at last. I understand very well why it is chosen to make an appearance here. Ah. Uh, that whale does not belong to Tavat. Oh. It is a monster that has traversed the stars, weeping all weeping the while. Weeping all the while. Oh, it has been greedily so consuming the energy from the planet's primordial sea, using it to oh, grow. Oh wow! That is the main cause for the rising sea level. Oh, this is such cool lore. And once it has finished consuming all of the energy contained within the sea, its next step will be... To devour everybody! He said that when the Hydro Archon first created Fontanians out of Oceanids, uh -huh. she filled their blood vessels with primordial seawater. Mm. Precisely. That whale finds the blood of Fontanians <gasps> nigh impossible to resist. Dude, yo, it's like a freaking vampire story. <laughs> the whale's like a vampire. Therefore, when it left the primordial sea, Decided to make its next stop a packed opera house wow. full of food. Food in the form of Fontanians. That's crazy, but how is it portaling like this? What is this? We'll barely managed to push it back, right? In that case, won't it come back to target the people again once it's managed to recover its strength? Ah, uh, well, yeah, we should. We, I guess we're gonna have to. That is correct. Get rid of Indeed, it somehow. It is more accurate to say that we should thank that harbinger for buying us some time. Oh. Without him. The whale would have likely come onto land far sooner. Yes! Put some respect on his name, man! Put some respect on his name! And now I'm wondering... Is it possible that... Because, okay, so the, the Oratrice judged the Hydro Archon as guilty. So it seems like the Oratrice was essentially following the will of, like, Celestia? when it rendered that judgment. So is it possible that the reason, because it sounds like, again, it sounds like Celestia, Celestia's intention maybe is to, but then again, okay, well now I'm a little bit confused because I, I thought that Celestia's intention was for Fontaine to flood so that the humans would return to Oceanids. But We've already established that, like, the prophecy has kind of been fulfilled. Like, we've already had judgment rendered upon Farina, and she was, like, sitting on the throne all alone crying. So it, fe it seems like the prophecy has already come to pass. That being said, I have a feeling that Celestia's intention still was to have Fontaine maybe flood it as a way of, like, again, like, returning present to past, you know? Like, returning, like, re having the humans revert to oceanids which is their natural state like that's what they were all, always intended to be uh Egeria committed a sin by altering their natural state of being um so i'm wondering 
if maybe like the the whale is the means by which they were going to like have everybody revert back into oceanids and did the oratrice judge child guilty because child was like fighting the whale and thereby like trying to go against the will of celestia because like is if you kill the whale then the, the people of fontaine won't revert back to oceanids am i thinking about this right like, could that be the reason why it judged Child guilty? Because I'm still stuck on, like, why did it judge Child guilty? Is it because Child was essentially trying to, like, again, unbeknownst to him, is it because he's essentially trying to defy the will of Celestia? Like, is that what's happening? From the way he looked, he must have been fighting the creature for oh. quite a long time. Oh, interesting. That battle maniac. We've always known that he had a special connection mm -hmm. with that wheel, but we definitely didn't expect it to help us out like this. Yeah, or is it like, chi is it just Child's connection to the whale? Like, just by nature of his very connection to the whale? Is that why he was judged guilty by the oratrice? Anyway, hmm. now that we know that this whale is the actual cause of the disaster recorded in the prophecy, all we need to do to stop the prophecy would be to find a way to beat it up, right? Yeah, I just gotta punch him a few times. It is too late. Huh? What do you mean? It had already absorbed too much of the primordial sea's oh, energy before we could snap. notice it. At this point, it has become practically integrated oh, with the sea itself. God. Okay. Uh. Well. What? What do we do? Even if the entirety of Tevat were to be destroyed, it could still survive and swim off towards some other world. Oh. Uh, okay. Okay. That, what do we do? That's not something I will accept. Mm hmm but what do we, how do we fix it? We've I don't know what to do. We've already done everything we can, and we even found the true culprit. I wonder if it's possible that maybe this is where th this, this Farina self-sacrifice, and I'm, I'm still waiting to see if my theory is correct, is this where potential Farina self-sacrifice comes in, We've come comes so into play. Far. What's she doing right now, by you the way? just tell me that the last hurdle is some impossible foe. That's just not fair. I love Navia. Uh, but yeah, what is Farina doing right now? Is she still sitting on the throne? Did she... I, I don't think she evacuated. Indeed. That's not how a grand performance should end. Mm-hmm. I'll fight it to the end. No matter what. Oh, I love Clarend. God, so I love... prophecy will be fulfilled no matter what, huh? Yeah. Yeah, okay, so yeah, so the flooding is still part of the prophecy, so I wonder if, like, maybe... Maybe it was, like, child's fate to fight the whale, and that's why Egeria... Huh. I'm, I'm just so curious why he was found guilty by the Oratrice. The prophecy. Yes. What has been prophesied will be fulfilled. Right, this is what Mage N said you to may us. Use such things as the history of the future. Okay. After everything, it still turned out like this. We couldn't fight against fate. Nope, that does not mean that we cannot fight against fate. We've, we, we've still got two hands. We can throw down. Wait, but if this is all about fate... Just as prophecies are usually mm -hmm. only the future as seen from the perspectives of the gods, yep. could things be happening in hidden corners mm -hmm. where the gods' gaze does not fall? Yeah. Yep. Ultimately, fate shall serve as your only guide hmm. no matter what will happen in Tevat's future. All you need to do is to play your part. Time for us to play our parts. Could it be that even if the prophecy will be fulfilled, there will still be a way to save everybody? Yes! Yes! Did I miss something? Yeah, I don't know exactly what we missed, but there's gotta be a way. Wait, I forgot about Farina. What was it that she wanted to say to me at the last moment in the giant magic box? What is her real secret? Yup, she's got something. She's got something. Oh? Oh? And she is still sitting up there. Oh, what's happening with the oratrice? Ah. Uh, I believe it is preparing to carry oh. out the death sentence. Oh no! And she's just passively accepting it. Ah. Uh, no, I still need answers. Yeah, save her! Save her! That's too harsh a sentence. <gasps> oh. 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 What? Whoa! What is this? Oh. <gasps> what is that? That's like the, the 
That's the... That's the Oratrice? And then she was wearing different clothes. Oh! Oh my god. Yo, she looks so Yo. beautiful! Oh, <laughs> uh, dot 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 Farina question mark! Yo, what is, what's going on? Sorry, that shocked expression on your face Ooh. is just too amusing. Huh. I couldn't help myself. She sounds different, she sounds really like mature, her voice is, is deeper. You are not Farina. Yeah, who, who are, are you? you? Uh. The sweet sound of bewilderment. Oh, so lore. Marvelous. A sure sign that my attempt to deceive everyone was a resounding success. Oh. But to answer your question, I am Fosalor. Oh. You know, the god. What the heck? Fosalor. Why did you deceive Why us? Why did you deceive us? Oh. Oh, this is so interesting. Oh, that wasn't my goal, of course. Goodness, no. But I had to fool everyone else, too, oh. if I was to stand any chance of deceiving... Deceiving fates? Hmm? The heavenly principles. Oh. Deceiving the heavenly principles? Oh my god. It's all because of that pernicious prophecy. Dreadful, wasn't it? Mm. Everyone doomed to dissolve. Fontaine condemned to be flooded. Oh my god. I'm like, I'm speechless. One was not amused. In fact, one was positively bemused when that problem was thrust upon me by my dearest predecessor. Okay. That's the former Hydro Archon Egeria for the uninitiated. Okay. It hardly gets more disastrous than a preordained national catastrophe. Now does it? That's very true, but this is so strange. So is Fosalor like a living inside of Farina? Like how is how does this all work? She knew full well that the prophecy would surely come to pass. Mm-hmm. And as one of the seven, she also knew full well that one defies the heavenly principles at one's peril. Ah, uh, okay. So yes. As you have no doubt surmised, it was a rather impossible situation that I found yeah. myself in. I spent a terribly long time mulling it over, wow. alone on the ocean floor. Hmm. And I was almost growing Dick. barnacles by the time I finally realized there oh. was only one possible solution to this confounding conundrum. Oh. Boy, okay, what is the solution? I had to outwit the heavenly principles, mm. allow the prophecy to be fulfilled, ostensibly at least, mm. while saving everyone at the same time. Dang, oh my gosh, this, oh, this is so good! <laughs> I'm a genius, I know. <laughs> I can only assume that's why Egeria chose me as her successor. Oh, this is this is this is just fascinating. Although looking back now, it was hardly the inheritance one dreams of. Between the task of mm. saving the nation, the quotidian duties of the Hydro Archon, mm. and not to mention the original sin of creating a new race of humans, I dare say she <laughs> yeah. left me quite a colossal mess. To Sounds clean up. like you've had your hands full. <sighs> But one can only play the hand one is dealt. Mm. I did not choose this any more than I chose to be one of her Oceanid familiars. Oh, wow. So you were also once one of the Oceanids. Dang. Transformed into a human by Egeria's hand. Yes, I was. Wow. I always dreamed of becoming human. Mm. And I still do, even now. In my eyes, oh. to be human is to be part of the greatest opera ever known. This is so incredible. This is so incredible. I love the dialogue, too. To be human is to be part of the greatest opera ever known. And it's it's so interesting because it, it, it really, I think, resonates with Nervalette, too. Like, I feel like he can absolutely relate to this. He probably has a lot of empathy for this feeling of wanting to be human, of, of finding human emotion to be just, like, such a beautiful thing. After becoming a god, I separated my divinity from my body and oh, spirit. Wow. 
Leaving behind only a self that was as naive and bewildered wow. as my past self on her first day as a human being. Oh, amazing. The me you see before you now is that divinity. And the human counterpart ah. I left behind, I named Farina. Farina. Wow. She could feel joy, sorrow, and everything in between. She could be as vain mm -hmm. and conceited, or as meek and vulnerable as she wished. And I think that's... I think there's something to be said for the fact that, yes, Farina is so incredibly human. And it's so interesting because Fosilor herself just, just mentioned how she longed for humanity and like farina is the embodiment of all that humanity her strengths were of a kind only a human could possess mm -hmm. as were her shortcomings mm -hmm. but in my eyes farina's humanity was what made mm -hmm. her perfect yep she was perfectly, perfectly human. human in every way the person i always wanted to be and I really like this idea of, like, being perfect in your own imperfection. Like, humans by nature are imperfect, and yet Fosilor views that as perfection. Like, the fact that we are emotional, that we are sometimes irrational, that we feel joy, that we feel sorrow, all of those things, while sometimes imperfect, it's what makes us perfectly human. Anyway, so then I cursed her. <laughs> I'm sorry, <laughs> it's just like <laughs> such an abrupt shift. Anyway, so then I cursed her. <laughs> All part of the plan, of course. Mm -hmm. The plan to deceive the heavenly principles. Dang, dude, Fosilor next level. <sighs> Nervalet. Do you still remember the final scene of the prophecy? Yeah. The Hydra Archon alone, weeping on her throne. Mm -hmm. In order that the prophecy might appear fulfilled, I invited Farina to be an actress. Mm to play the part of the Hydro Archon in the prophecy. And that's why she was so determined to play her role. Under the curse I placed on her, so long as I, Fosilor's divinity, continued to exist, she could not die. Mm. But nor was she free to live her life in the pursuit of happiness. Instead, she had to take on the identity of the Hydro Archon. She relinquished the joys of 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 the human pursuit of happiness in order to play her role instead she was forced to take the stage mm. in the opera house to embrace the role of leading lady and embrace it she did to forever play the part of the god from the prophecy I mean, what an actress All to create a deceitful appearance of that prophecy coming wow. to pass Dang. That's that's actually so incredible. Wow. I suppose now you probably understand why your court is called the Opera Epicles. What does Epicles mean? Invocation of one or several gods? Does make sense. But Farina is only human, isn't she? Hmm. Even though she has had a long life, her mind is no stronger than that of any other ordinary human being. She is. She is only human. I cannot begin to fathom what she has mm -hmm. had to endure. It must have been torture for her. Uh, man. It I feel really bad. Indeed. And although she is, in a sense, me in human form, I most definitely owe her an apology for it. She's had to take on so much. That's so much for one person to bear. Like to have to take on all of that responsibility to give up the pleasures of ordinary life to play your role. Ah, oh, wow. That's incredible. What an, what what incredible character writing. It's been 500 years. Dang. And for 500 years she's just kept at it and all along she's been playing her part in the most unimaginably long unbearably lonely and agonizingly painful opera of all time what a heavy emotional burden to carry for just one person
Uh, I came into contact with Farina's tears. If I remember correctly, tears often contain a being's strongest emotions. With sufficiently strong hydrosensitivity, I can form an emotional connection, just like I did with that oceanid at the, f at the fountain of Lucene. Wait, could this be Farina's inner world? Oh man, what a poignant image. A stage, but there's no one in the audience. There's no one there for her in her audience, and then she just has spotlights pointing at her from every direction while she sits on the throne and plays her role. Farina, what is she doing on stage? Wait a moment, that probably isn't Farina. That's likely a reflection of her inner self. This is probably how she feels, constantly watched, with no one really in her corner. If I can directly speak to that self, I might be able to easily get what I wanted to know. I came here for answers. Either way, this opportunity is not to be missed. Let me try talking to her. And I suppose we are the one variable in all of this. We've breached her inner self. And there she sits on an empty stage. Oh, who permitted you to come onto this hmm. stage? Now, I understand your admiration for hmm. my august self, but I must ask you to keep to the rules. Uh, Farina? I guess she does not recognize all me. All right, all right. It is not my intent to reprimand oh, you. Her there inner, no her inner thoughts? There is no your name. Just be off with you. Do not distract me from my performance. And she's thinking, don't look at me. Don't look at me. Well, meanwhile, all of the spotlights are on her. And she's at the center of everyone's attention. Um, I don't see an audience here. <laughs> oh, do not jest. Can you not feel it? Just let the stage lights go off, please. Even if only for one second. I am Fosalor. The eyes of countless Fontanians are upon me. I must, at all times, display the utmost elegance and nobility. When really deep down, she just wants to be herself. But instead, she has to shoulder the burden of all these expectations and eyes on her. Something's off. There's no getting through to her. Even in her heart of hearts, she's still playing the role of the Hydra Archon. And that just shows her dedication. Her dedication to the role is is this great. It's of this magnitude. What sort of resolve must she have that even her inner self and subconscious would have such an impenetrable defense? I have to find a way. Wow. All right, can we can we turn off the lights? Dear audience, the performance is experiencing oh? a technical difficulty, but worry not. The guards shall resolve it soon enough. And that's crazy. I try to turn off the spotlights and she has an inner defense that doesn't even like it does she doesn't even necessarily even though in her heart of hearts she does want me to turn off the spotlights, it's like her natural reaction is to stop me from turning them off. That's fascinating. Into the wind. Hey, what gives? The audience is still watching me, you know. That's crazy. Wait, Dang. Farina's subconscious is actually fascinating, man. Holy. Very, very, very interesting. As one with wind and cloud. The wind knows me. There is no escape. Alright, we got one more to go. Oh. It's so interesting that she resists. It's like, uh, again, in her heart of hearts, she does want me to turn off the spotlights. Like, we saw the inner dialogue. But she still resists it because she feels like she has to play her role. That's all the spotlights turned off. In Farina's heart, they must have symbolized the eyes of the people on her. Speaking of which, I think I just received some sort of signal. Was that her true voice? Hmm. A ticket? When did that end up here? A very golden, shiny, golden ticket. Is this the ticket to your innermost thoughts and feelings? And now I'm in the audience. 
Either way, it looks like the show is about to begin. In that case, show me how you truly feel, Farina. Wow. Before a mirror, Farina. Scene one. Let's see your true self. And the mirror is in the spotlights? Farina. Farina. Hmm. And she's like, this is interesting. So she's in her, um, her short hair form right now. Huh? Who is that? Who's calling me? Where are you? Be not nervous. Hmm. Be not afraid. I am before you. Wow. Wait a moment. You're... Mirror me? How can this be? Farina and Fosilor, two halves of the whole. Hmm. <laughs> Mirror you, huh? You know what? That's not bad. Let's go with that. <laughs> Mirror me. W what do you wish to say? Who? The prophecy. Have you heard of it? Hmm. What prophecy? <sighs> Wait, mm. I know, I think, I don't know why, but it's in my head somehow. Hmm. The people will all be dissolved into the waters. Uh-huh. And only the Hydro Archon will remain, weeping on her throne. Only then will the sins of the people of Fontaine mm. be washed away. Hmm. Oh, <laughs> very good. You know it well. Is this when she... Is this like a flashback to when she created Farina? What's going on? I can't seem to remember anything clearly. The only thing hmm. I know for sure is this prophecy. Will it really come to pass? Mm. <sighs> yes, it will. And that is why yeah. I've come to you. Disaster will come to Fontaine sooner or later. Things will develop just as the prophecy declared. Okay. There is no escaping it. So I'm assuming this is when Fosilor first created Farina. But doesn't that mean everyone will die? I'm a Fontanian just like them. Mm. Will I dissolve too? Mm. <laughs> Oh, don't worry. Mm. Magical meetings exist in this world precisely to give people uh. a chance to turn things around. Mm. It is the reason why oh. you met me today. Okay. I will tell you how to save everyone, but you may have to suffer uh. somewhat. Dang. That's amazing. And for because she cared so deeply... She suffered so much. She chose to suffer because she cared so much. Oh, oh, so there's still hope after all. Goodness, you frightened me. You spoke so much and with so much certainty. Hmm. As for the suffering, yeah. well, I will admit that the first thing that came to mind was, why do I have to be the one to suffer? I mean, that's a fair question. But... If the prophecy will come true, mm -hmm. I'll also die anyway, right? So, if I've already met you as my magical meeting in this world, mm -hmm. if there were scales with all the people yeah. with my pain on one side and my pain on the other, is it not obvious where the scales should tilt? Dang, she's been making that sacrifice all this time. <laughs> You truly are the perfect human. My ideal. Hmm. I suppose this would also be the justice that belongs to you. Ah, uh, I always wondered why she called herself the god of justice. Uh -huh. And I get it now. I get it. Don't worry, it's nothing. Listen well. Fontaine has just lost its Hydro Archon. I need you to play mm. a role, that of the new Archon. 
Dang. That's crazy, man. And so she... She... Forsook? Forsaked? Forsook? She forsook? Forsaken? I don't know. I'm not sure what the right word is. But she gave up everything that she wanted to be to play this one role. Play as... A god. A god. That's right. You must begin a, a never-ending never masquerade. masquerade. You must never Ooh. let anyone suspect your identity. Wow. If you can keep it up, then I shall have my way of defying this prophecy. Dang. But should your identity be revealed, then all hope and that, will be lost. That was why she was so dedicated. That was why she was so determined. But how will I do this? A human assuming the role of a god without being exposed. Mm. Don't worry. It's a tall order. What you must do is not to turn yourself into a real god. You simply need to play the role of a god as humans imagine wow. them to be. Dang. Oh, this is ah. Oh, this is so much context. This is what I've been waiting for. Like, oh my god, this is so good. This is so so being good. Being a human yourself. I'm sure you already know what such an entity would be like. Wow. And it, it explains why with Farina, everything feels so like played up. It's because she was playing the role of, of how, how she saw a god as a human. Remember, your true challenge will not be pursuing divinity, mm, but, contending but contending against, against humanity. humanity. Oh, oh, God, dude, the dialogue is so good in this, too. Um, I'm still not sure I understand, but I'll mm -hmm. try. I'll try to do this. Ah. So, how long am I going to have to play this oh, role? Oh, you know, just a casual 500 years, to no biggie. To accomplish this mission, you will have to stay on the stage for many, mm. many years. You will endure and not grow old until your task ends. And how exhausting to stay in that role for that long, to never drop the mask. But I promise you... And to have no one to confide all in. will eventually end in a magnificent and dramatic hmm. trial. And, and everyone, everyone will be saved. Will be saved. Wow. Ooh. A trial. Huh. How exciting. I'll be looking forward to it. And when she says a magnificent and dramatic trial, is she talking about like Farina's trial or like what what happened with the whale or is there still still more to come? A session speech, Farina, scene two. Oh man, this is so good. Oh, this is so good so far. Oh my gosh, dude, this is like, oh man, the character writing is so good in this. Oh my gosh, wow. Actually, just so incredible. Oh, oops, my bad. Sorry, I didn't realize there were stairs over here. Oh, my bad. That's my bad, all right. <sighs> the Maison Cardinalise has announced my accession, but this is my first oh. time facing the people. And it's, once again, she's in the spotlight. What should I say to most appear like a god? Mm. To be honest, I still don't know. Perhaps I should first try to act natural. This is so nice, like, getting to hear her inner thoughts. Like, she just sounds like a, a completely normal person. Like, she has the same worries, the same fears, the same anxieties as just any normal human being. Then she has to put those on the back burner, tuck them away, and behave like a god. Some encourage. Uh, um, ladies and gentlemen, good evening. And welcome to the Opera Epiclays. Wow. I'm sure you've all heard about how I have taken on the role mm. of Hydro Archon. Indeed, I am Farina de Fontaine, huh. your new Archon. And this is so interesting. Appear earnest. It's like she has to feign everything. In truth, 
I know little about becoming a nation's new god, but it will be my honor to guide you all. Wow. As the god Fosalor, the god of justice, I hmm. shall do all within my power to lead you into an age of fairness and justice. So all the scripts close politely. Once again, thank you all for coming. If you should have hmm. any questions or suggestions, please send them to the Maison Cardinalis. The future of Fontaine will require us to work together, after all. Mm-hmm. Yep. This should do it. Dang. I thought I might stammer, but thankfully, I was able to convey my thoughts mm. just fine. Okay, and next. Oof, man. It's sad how much she had to give up to play this role. Like, everything she does is, is so structured and with the specific of, uh, intent of appearing like a god. It's like she can't ever let herself just be a normal human. It's it's such a high standard to live up to as as a human being. That's the new Hydro Archon. Is this some kind of joke by the Maison? Mm. I would have thought that a being that surpasses humanity would be a bit more assertive. Assertive. <laughs> hey, did you hear that? She even told us to send her suggestions there at the end. Hmm. Shouldn't gods be all powerful? She's being so modest. Hmm. What's the difference between her and an ordinary person then? And I bet all of these like whisperings and criticisms probably informed the identity that she showed that she chose to take on, that she chose to portray. If you ask me, perhaps the succession didn't actually happen. She might just be a maison back puppet. And this is why she created the the persona that she did, I think. Wait. What's going on? Why is everyone suspecting me of being a fake? Oh, <laughs> this is bad. If I get exposed here, there'll be no saving the people from the prophecy. Damn it, Fontanians. She's trying to save your asses. Right. Mir me said that I just need to play the role of mm -hmm. God as humans imagine them to be. Wow. Calm down, Farina. Think. Think. What do the people want? Mm -hmm. How would they imagine a god to speak and act? To completely change who she is as a person. Assertive, with a strong sense of presence. One who can dispel mm -hmm. all doubt. That is the character I'm fated to play. And I mean, no wonder she became so good at it. She's been playing that for 500 years. <sighs> Wow. Oh, very good, my people. Mm. Only ones such as you are deserving of my rule. Oh, dang. Now, I was wondering if some weak puppet were to one day come on to the stage and claim ownership of this opera house, would the children of Fontaine follow them? Dang. Oh my god. Okay. I mean, like, freaking put them in their places, like Slay Queen, but also, it is sad. It's sad. <laughs> well, it seems that you would all see right through them. Having passed my test, you are qualified to witness wondrous trials alongside my august self here in this opera house. Dang. You may That's, consider oh. my previous act a door gift of sorts. I thought it was a debut that suited the atmosphere. Wow. Oh my gosh, man. Okay, this this character writing is so good. This is this is so good. Now then, let us be reintroduced. Dang. Ah, so that was just a performance. How could I have forgotten that we were inside an opera house? Silencing the doubters. Dang. Wow. Such a fascinating and bold deity. How wonderful. Our future may yet be bright after all. And how sad, like, she herself wasn't good enough for these people. She had to play a specific role. She had to portray exactly what she believed they wanted her to portray. And that's probably why, um, you know, when we first saw her, she's sitting in the spotlight. And that's probably why she was still playing that role when we, like, first got into this, this, this sort of scene with her on the stage. Like, 
she can never turn that off because uh, again it's like being just who she is as a person isn't good enough it, it doesn't cut it for the role of the of the hydro archon it seems i've turned them around best follow this flow and restart my accession speech resolutely with conviction my dear people whether you acknowledge me or not whether you trust me or nay, mm. I say to you, stepping into the spotlight, keep faith in your ardor for justice. And so interesting that she steps into the spotlight too. It's almost like she's relinquishing her her past self. She's relinquishing everything that she was previously because now she has to play this role in the spotlight for uh, as long, however long it takes. We have heard it indefinitely said that this nation's sins can no longer be washed away. Well. I say that justice is most fragrant when it blooms amid sin. Turn up the drama, my girl. The scales of justice should not weigh heavy in the hands of its god. Mm -hmm. On one side, it must carry fairness and justice. <laughs> and on the other, praise and applause. <laughs> mm -hmm. Dang. May law be the prayer on our lips. May judgment be our worship. Let us light the fires oh. and drink to the future of Fontaine! Dang, end the speech emphatically. There is no trouble in this world that justice cannot solve. Mm -hmm. All that is wow. needed is for you, my people, to believe in it, heart and soul. And this is so, like, the way that justice has been recontextualized, just by knowing, like, Farina's thoughts of my pain on one side and all the people of Fontaine on the other side of the scale. So long as I love I, it. The Archon Fosalor stand within the Opera Epicles. So long as I stand before the Oratrice. Wow. I shall even judge the gods Dang. of this world. Wow. I mean, that's a speech. That is a speech if I've ever heard one. Damn. And it's also so interesting because I, I talked a little bit about Again, self-sacrifice on Farina's parts. And I think, I don't know if it's still going to play out in the way that I thought it to be, but I think it is accurate because this entire time she's been making one gigantic self-sacrifice. It wasn't exactly the context that I was imagining. It's not the way that I thought it was going to be, but again, this entire act is a form of self-sacrifice. I wonder if there's still going to be, like, some other element of self-sacrifice. I guess we'll, I guess we'll find out. Um, but again, the entirety, these whole 500 years, she has basically been sacrificing herself for the people. And when she's not herself, she gets the response that she intended. Scene three, Opera House, Farina. Hmm. Is this supposed to be her bedroom? I just wanna I just wanna see what's what's all here. Okay. And there's spotlights in every single one. There's a spotlight here. I suppose maybe her bed is the only place where there's not an actual spotlight in her dreams. There's a spotlight over here, and then we have a spotlight over here. People watching her every single move. Lady Farina, here are today's case reports, as well as a summary of the follow-up for your perusal. Okay. <sighs> Come now. Was I not just at the opera house in person? Mm. Leave these kinds of things to Nervalette. Oh gosh, and the way she just like leans into the role so heavily. And you can see her her appearance has changed. She has, she's long hair Farina. Besides, none of these trials were the one that I'm looking forward to the most. Mm. Um, if I may be so impertinent, what kind of trial are you truly looking forward to? Mm. A magnificent, dramatic, uh. and wondrous trial. A, A trial, trial to, to end, end all, all things. things. <sighs> How could you hope to understand? Little glimmer of her true desire. I mean, you know, it's not like she wants to play this role. It's just like she has to. But boy, I'm sure she probably is just like desperate for it all to be over. That's true. I fear I lack the ability to grasp your divine thought. Lady yes, Arcon. get out of here, you plebeian. You could never understand the musings of a god. No need 
made for flight. <laughs> and do not take what I said before too seriously. <laughs> mm. Go now. Do your duties. The <sighs> trial I await. It will come one day. Oh my goodness gracious. Oh. And then we have the spotlight over here. Lady Farina, uh, I don't know what to say. Mm. Thank you for agreeing to see me. It's like her persona can never drop because there's always someone watching. No need to thank me. Or rather, thank your own sense of perseverance instead. Long have you stood in line to meet me, have you not? Mm. <laughs> oh, I'm afraid that's just an inevitable consequence of my divine charm. <laughs> and it's not even just the way that she speaks, it's like everything. The way that she carries herself, the way that she presents herself, the, her, her mannerisms, the way that she sits, even the way she sits with like her leg crossed. I feel like these are all things that she has adopted to lean into the role of a god. All right, Deuteria, is it? How is your son's illness? Like, I feel like real Farina, deep down inside Farina, probably just wants to be sitting like crisscross applesauce on the floor or something. <laughs> but it's so interesting to see how even her mannerisms match her belief of how a god should be portrayed. Uh, you remembered me, and you knew of my family too. Mm. Uh, he is doing much better now. In fact, he is far more of an ardent believer than I. Wow. He was the one who forced me to seek an audience with you and to bring your words back to him. And that just shows you how much she truly cares about her people, you know, the fact that she remembers this. <laughs> oh, good. Very good. If this should happen again in the future, please do not hesitate to come and tell me. Going down to citizens' homes every mm. so often, while not usual practice, should serve as a fine change of pace. It's really interesting because we just had a bird's eye view of this scene and she is in the spotlight, but the other couch with like this unknown voice is also in the spotlight. And I feel like that kind of just goes to show this idea that like even the audience, whether they realize it or not, is also a part of the act. Everyone is a part of the performance. That's why there's like a spotlight on her and also a spotlight on them, I think. <sighs> Like, You're see, so they have, like, a separate spotlight. Thank you once again, on behalf of my son. And again, I think it's because, like, be because she acts the way that she does, it gives, a it gives a certain interpretation to the other party, and thus they become part of the act without even realizing it. Oh, this is so well written! I'm so happy right now! Like, I'm sad for Farina, but I am, like, so happy about the writing. This is so good. It's a mixed bag of emotions, it truly is. Hmm. Is this when she was researching the prophecy? Lady Farina, hmm? here are the latest hydrological reports. Okay. As for the specific parameters you asked to take note mm. of, I'm afraid things still don't look good. Okay. Yeah. I see. It's as I thought then. As your mm. god, I did already expect yeah. this, but I wanted to see how far your human wisdom would allow you to analyze it. And again, it's like like the first two sentences she said sounded a bit like herself, but then immediately she flips the switch. And and it's as your god, I already expected this. Yeah. All manner of signs indicate mm -hmm. that the prophecy will still come to pass. Mm -hmm. Forget it. That's not something you need to worry about right now. And oh, it's so nice because it's like you see glimmers. You see glimmers of her. Like like her voice, she doesn't sound as assured as she usually does And when she says this first sentence. But then again, she has to say, oh, no, no, forget it. I, ca I can't be vulnerable with you. I have, to, I have to continue to play my role. I can't let anyone suspect me. Uh, well, as I understand it, the Fontaine Research Institute is also trying to find a way to counter the rising water levels. Mm. Really? Uh, have they found anything? And she can't... And she can't mask her desire to know. Like, she is so desperate for a solution that she can't help this reaction. I'm afraid that they haven't found any effective mm. solution thus far. <clears throat> oh, is that 
that so? Mm -hmm. Well, no wonder. This issue has reached the realm of the gods, mm -hmm. after all. Still, their spirit is praiseworthy. Exactly, yep, but then we have to recompose ourselves. Ahem, <coughs> hum, oh god, I, I, I let a little bit of my true self show there. Fascinating, man. And dang, even in the bedroom we're in the spotlight. And even now, it's like she still can't drop the act. It's good to see that everything's getting on track. Mm. There are no longer any voices of suspicion. Mm -hmm. Maybe this is fine. I just need to keep going. And everyone will be saved. And what a very lonely existence. Even the framing of this, like, feels so incredibly lonely. You know, she's all by herself, sitting on the bed in the f spotlight, her feet dangling, they don't quite touch the ground, and then, you know, we don't see her full facial expression, we just see kind of like this bird's eye view of her. It just feels very isolating. Like, she's the only person in the world. Don't think too hard about this. You need rest. Tomorrow's a new day. She is the center of the world, but it's a very, very, very lonely world. Scene 4, Opera House, Farina. Lady Farina, here are the new trial reports mm. for the latest cases, as well as a summary of the follow-up. Okay. Uh, <laughs> there'll be no need for that. I've seen them already. There's no need to go back over scenes I've witnessed in person before. Wow. Dang, dude. She really is a great actress, though. I will give her that. And then back to short hair. Lady Farina, I I've waited so, so long for this chance to see you in this manner. Oh, it's so interesting how the hair switches Indeed, to... Indeed, my dear loyal citizen. This joyous moment is an honor for us both. Hmm. And back to long Lady hair. Farina. We're detecting significant hydrological anomalies near Poisson. Okay. Understood. Keep monitoring. Okay. Keep me informed should anything come up at the Institute. Hmm. It's almost like the line between the reality of, like, who she is as a person and who she is playing the role of the Archon is starting to become blurred because I can't see any, like, specific reason why she had the short hair in that scene versus having the long hair in this scene. Like, it's it's not like in this in the previous scene sitting on the couch she was, like, any more emotional than she is in this current scene right here. Again, it feels like the line between them is starting to become blurred, and I think that's probably the case because that would make sense as to why when we first got here she was still playing the role of the Hydro Archon. She's probably got a bit of a blurred sense of identity. It's like, I mean, when you've been playing this role for 500 years and you feel like you have to play it constantly and you can't ever drop the act, then at what point does that literally become you? <sighs> hmm. I don't think I let anything How exhausting. Today. That must be. I must show the people that there is nothing to worry about. And even here, when she's completely alone with her own thoughts, she's still got the long hair on. I just don't know when these days will end. And I have a feeling that as as this progresses, if we're gonna get more scenes of this, I have a feeling that we're gonna see a lot of long hair Farina. I feel utterly exhausted. Uh, yeah, I don't blame you. Best to rest early today. Too. I do not blame you for that at all. Okay. Scene five, opera house, Farina. A lot of opera house scenes. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. Long hair and short hair, Farina. Okay. It's all, it's probably all just, wow. Look at all those, look at all those days. Uh, scene... Eight, two, eight, oh, 182,000! It's, oh, it's like a dream being able to speak with you up close like this. And instead of being treated like a person, she's treated like a symbol. She's placed on a pedestal rather than being treated like an actual human being. I've heard that the first member of our family who was honored to receive an audience with you was Madame Deuteria. Mm -hmm. Almost 
20 generations ago. Wow. Yep, and she's got the long hair. <laughs> and what a fine family yours is indeed. Mm. It brings me great joy to meet such a faithful believer. A descendant Dang. of a line most ardent. And it sounds like she's crying. <laughs> but surely you exaggerate, Lady Farina. Oh. Uh, um, my lady? Wow. Hmm? What is it, good citizen? She's cracking. Oh, are, are you crying? Ooh. Uh -huh. <laughs> really wow. No. I didn't even notice. And that's so crazy. Like, she's been wearing this mask for so long that she's become blinded to her own emotions. She doesn't even realize that she's in tears as she's speaking and, like, like forcing herself to portray this person. Like, it's become so natural to her that she doesn't even realize. This must be the overflow Ooh. of Hydro from my person. And she can't be vulnerable. Well, can't quite help being the god whose dominion is the waters, can I? Wow. It takes- and it takes so much of a toll on her. <laughs> no wonder. No wonder. A manifestation of your power, then. Oh, Archon, I am honored to have witnessed it. Honored indeed. And probably- and like, they just accept that answer. Like, probably no one has ever stopped or taken the time to ask her if she's okay. Or to acknowledge her personhood, you know? <laughs> Everyone acknowledges her godhood, but no one acknowledges her as a person. So interminable. So lonely, yep. <laughs> so lonely. Just wow. how much longer. And this is what we hear at the Fountain of Lucene. Hundreds of years must have passed by now. Mm. Perhaps the show must go on for hundreds more. Yeah, that's a very lonely existence, and and yet again, even even this framing, it looks like her sitting on the throne. Like even this kind of mirrors the prophecy. Like sitting all alone, crying by herself. She's kind of in like the same position that we see her on the throne in. I never imagined that it would hurt so much. Mm. Oh, poor Farina. Poor Farina. I mean, I just, I can't imagine how exhausting that must be to have to keep portraying that. And again, we're to a point where she, she's not even like herself when she's all alone. She still feels like she has to play this role. Have I reached mm. my limit? Mm. No. Perhaps I yeah, reached it long ago. You probably did. Today, I didn't even notice my own tears. And how terrifying that must be, like, to, f to feel like you're losing your connection with, with, with you, you know? Like, her tears are a part of what makes her her, part of what makes her human. And she didn't even notice that they were falling because she has, like, the act. She's become so enmeshed with this act that she doesn't even notice her, her humanity. I want to tell someone, anyone, about this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Would that not destroy all I've done so much? No one to confide in. And oh, it makes me feel so bad because like, like she was about to, oh God, I'm gonna start crying. I'm sorry, I'm like, I'm like holding it back. But like she was about to, she was about to confide in us. And then, and then we like, uh, <laughs> and then we like, uh, she probably finally thought that she was gonna have someone to confide in. And then we, like, kind of betrayed her trust. That makes me feel really bad. <laughs> I've conducted so many investigations across the centuries. But there's not even a sliver of hope that we might break the problem. Like, she just looks so lonely. And we, like, uh, <laughs> I feel so bad. We're probably, like, the first person that she was even considering confiding in. And she's been waiting so long to have someone to be vulnerable with. And then we just, like, put her on trial. All I can do is keep heart. I must maintain this pact. And it's the only way to save Fontaine. Please, mirror me. You 
have to succeed. And like all this time, she's just been suffering and suffering and suffering for the sake of these people who like don't even see her as a person. <laughs> Opera House, Farina, and dot dot dot, 182,376. Farina, you don't have to shoulder this burden alone. And then, oh no, don't throw this in my face, please. Although I don't know what you might be keeping from everyone, your people are more than willing to share your burden with you. Mm-hmm. That's my voice. Is this scene from when we were within the giant magic box? This is great. I didn't think that this scene would replay in her inner world. Surely I'll find out what she wanted to tell me this time. It's probably because it was so significant to her! She was finally gonna have someone to tell about her feelings. Share my burden. <laughs> That's impossible. It was fated right from the start that this would be my duty alone. Mm-hmm, but it doesn't mean it has to be your burden but alone. even if your burden doesn't need to be yeah. shared, you can still choose to confide in someone. It can be your duty, but you can still share the burden. Just share it with me. I'm what you'd call a witness. And like, oh God, I bet she has probably longed to have someone Witness her vulnerability and witness her as a whole person. A witness? Huh. Yes. I've heard that you came to Tevat from beyond the stars, yes. In other words, you never belonged here. Like to have someone like see and acknowledge her and her efforts and everything that she's been doing? And if Tevat is, in its entirety, a show on a stage, then you're just a spectator, aren't you? I, yeah, yeah but, but am I? That's that's the question that I'm trying to find out. Am I just a spectator? Or am I an active if participant? That's the case. And She's then we right. turn off the I lights. Could confide in her. Good night. Uh, uh, please don't. Oh, God, I feel so bad about this. I feel so bad about this. If things don't play out as expected. The people of Fontaine will be the ones to pay the price. The, the, not only did we, like, betray her trust, but, like, the one single thing that she was trying to prevent from coming to pass, we, like, just came out and freaking exposed her. Like, we made that thing come to pass. No, Farina. You shouldn't be selfish. And then here's her inner self in the, the, the short hair. <sighs> But she so desperately wants to confide in somebody. What if, what if it's really all right? <sighs> Serena, you've worked so hard for so, mm. so long. And so then we... <laughs> I'm so mad at us for doing this. <sighs> Is it such an outrageous thing to do anyway? To find someone in whom you can confide your frustrations and sorrows. Surely it could not hurt. But then we just went and like spat on her trust. If you let this opportunity slip through your fingers. It might never come by again. Uh, Think about it long and hard. I can't believe we did this, man. Uh, and she was really gonna, she's gonna tell us. Uh. No, I have nothing to say. I am Farina, uh. the Archon of Fontaine. Everything will surely get better. Hmm. I mean, I like this response is so ingrained in her. Of course, of course, she would All you respond need to this do, way. Dear spectator, is to witness my performance until the curtains fall. Hmm. Mm. Fine. Fine. Dang, man. Dang. And then she's alone in the spotlight. Yet again.
So even Farina doesn't know the truth? Oh. You've never once let her in on the full plan? Ah, oh. yes. It had to be done. To deceive the heavenly principles, ah. you must first deceive yourself. Dang, that's crazy. She oh. did very well. If she had let her resolve falter even once in these five centuries, Dang. Fontaine would have been doomed to the most tragic fate. Yo, Farina, the real MVP! It seems that trusting humanity was the right decision after all. Hmm. I believe that I understand how your deception works, but that is only half the truth, is it not? And it's so, like... Again, it's it's really poignant because Fosalor talks about trusting humanity, and yet Farina essentially had to relinquish her humanity in order to become the symbol that the people needed. In order to become the symbol that humanity needed, Farina had to play the role of a god and thereby like cast away her humanity. How would you build on this foundation to save the people of Fontaine? That is the most important thing. Mm. Ah, good, good. Of course, the Udex of Fontaine has pinpointed the crux of the issue. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you've long sensed that the Oratrice is no simple machine, yes? Yeah. I've always suspected that it had its own consciousness. Mm -hmm. And Linny did mention that he heard a human voice within mm. the core chamber. Yeah, yep. I also love this framing, too, where they're, like, facing away from each other. It now seems that that person was you, mm. hidden within the machine all along. Am I right? Dang. And then I became one with the Oratrees, taking Fontaine's ah. Gnosis with me. Yes, it would seem so, wouldn't it? Dang. Alas, your understanding of this device still lacks sufficient depth. Okay. In truth, it is no enactor of justice. Oh. It is, in fact, a device oh. created to kill <gasps> the god of justice. Oh. I beg your pardon? Oh. Oh, you have it. And to be more precise, Dang. not only will the oratrice take down the god of justice, wow. It will also take down the divine throne upon which she has been placed. Dang, that's oh, it's crazy. And that's so cool how this looks like an Oceanid. I just noticed that, but like the, the top, it looks it looks like an Oceanid. <laughs> I mean, did you think I would be the sort to enjoy peaceful repose while mm. Farina suffered? Mm. Yeah. My work over these last 500 years has been to constantly accumulate indemnidium within the oratries. Wow. But really, some have already discovered that only a small fraction of the energy generated by the device was ever used to provide power to Fontaine. Is the rest meant to... meant to, to, meant to like, power the device to kill the god of justice? The vast majority has been... Mm. had yep. to be... accumulated. To enact this wow. death sentence. Oh my god. It was all I don't even know what to part say. of your plan then. Both the trial and the sentence. Dang. Damn. Indeed. This power, accrued over five centuries, wow. could have sustained Fontanians for millennia had it only been used for that purpose. Mm. Almost all of it has now been stored within the yeah. old trees. But only power of this magnitude could hope to destroy the Hydro mm. Archon's divine throne, mm -hmm. shaking the rules established by Celestia and breaking through the institution Dang. that is the Seven. Wow. So the Oratrice's call for death was for neither Farina nor Fosalor, but for the Hydro Archon. Mm-hmm. Yep. The destruction of that divine throne. If I do not misunderstand your intent, you must be. Returning what's rightfully yours to you, of course. Oh. <gasps> In other words, this was all done to return the authority of the Hydro Archon oh. to the Hydro Dragon of this planet. Dang. But. Oh my god. Uh... No. Oh. 
I'm what? Getting sad Aww. again, are we? <sighs> the authority of the ancient dragons shall soon be yours once more, O oh Hydro Dragon Sovereign. Mm. And this is the face you make. Nerfalet <laughs> just... I mean, he cares, you know? He cares. All you've done throughout the years is just so you can sacrifice uh. yourself at the very end. Oh, man. I've never quite seen it that way, you know. Mm. Even now, I'm quite pleased at how well my deception worked. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Nerfalet really cares, man. He cares so much. Hydro Dragon, Hydro Dragon, Aww. don't cry. Man. I must say, had it been within my rights, I would have loved to judge the heavenly principles mm. themselves. Were they not guilty of essentially the same crime? Mm-hmm. Egeria stole the power of the primordial sea. Yeah. And the heavenly principle stole the power you ancient dragons possessed. Yeah, man, what the heck? I How is that fair? Part, am the god of justice. And is it not just that your original powers should be returned to you? Hmm, man. Speaking of justice, I have always believed that justice lies in the process of pursuing human existence itself. Hmm, yeah. So, if the theft of the primordial sea's might was Fontaine's original sin, mm -hmm. then, leaving matters of procedural right and wrong aside, yeah. the descent of the Fontanians as humans and their right to exist in this world, yeah would be Fontaine's original justice. That's a nice way of putting it. That's a very In nice way of putting words, it. Existence was Egeria's justice. Mm. And to me, justice is the continuation of that existence. I like that. I like that. That's a very, very, very good way to put it. And again, I like how it kind of, it's kind of like a different spin on justice, and I like that. Like, I like that it kind of gives justice a different meaning than in the traditional sense. Defying the prophecy and ensuring that Fontaine's people shall live on. Mm. That should be the justice enthroned over all others. Yeah, At I this agree. point, we, whether it be myself or all other Fontanians, have shouldered the burden of this sin for far too long. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's like, why is it so bad to want to live a, a, as a human, you know? Why should that be their sin to shoulder when they just wanted to be people, you know? It's, it's not like they've done something horribly wrong. Like, they just wanted to have the right to exist as humans. Udex Nervillette. The highest judge in our land. When you regain your full power as an elemental sovereign, what verdict shall you pass upon us? Hmm. So when I was invited to the court of Fontaine to serve uh -huh. as Udex, I see now that that was your idea too. She had it all planned out from the very start. At last, I now understand the true purpose behind this position. Hmm. In the beginning, I was uninterested in human existence. But these five centuries of living yeah. alongside them have gradually brought about mutual understanding mm -hmm. between us. And I have even attempted to feel as they feel. You do feel as they feel. Nervalet has so much more humanity than he realizes. You are a devious one, Fosalor. Mm-hmm. Yep. Things being as they are, surely you know that I could never declare them to be guilty. Yep. Dang, wow. Oh, man. <sighs> the hour of my execution is almost here. Oh. For the sinner, the curtain call has come. Mm. I know I may not sound it, but faced with death, I find myself a little afraid. Mm. Perhaps this That's is her one humanity. thing both gods and humans have in common. Mm-hmm. I think gods are more human than they realize. <laughs> Farewell, Nervalette. I hope you've enjoyed the part you played these 500 years. Oh.
I mean, what a be- oh, what a beautiful way to end it. That's like, oh god. I mean, it's- It's a masterpiece, man. It's- it's stunning. Oh! I declare, people of Fontaine, your sins are forgiven. Like, oh my god. I mean, that was. Oh, ah, ah, so many emotions, man. Because, like, oh, I was so sad, but, like, at the same time, it was so beautiful. Like, the, the entire way that they did that, the framing of it, like, the, the dance that she does at the end, followed by the. It, it was just so beautiful, but, like, oh, it was so sad. God. Oh, man. What just happened? Has the death sentence been carried out? God, Was man. that bright light some sort of misdirection? Oh. I have a feeling that something huge just happened. I swear to God, man. Genshin just like, I've, I friggin... They need to like tone it down with the emotions, man. I'm like, I wasn't, I didn't want to, I, I feel like I've, I feel like I've cried so many times <laughs> playing Genshin recently. <laughs> But since we're all still alive and haven't been dissolved, I assume whatever happened was good for us. It's time to end this. Yeah. We must meet our punishment to that beast. Mm-hmm. Yeah, let's go. Didn't you say just a moment ago that it can't be defeated? We're de gonna defeat it anyways, I man. I the <sighs> sufficient to deal with it. Through certain means. Dang. I now have the ability to separate the power of the Primordial Sea from that creature. Oh, and it's like so sad too because I feel like I feel like even though Nervolette and Farina slash Fosilor, even though they have probably never been fully vulnerable with each other, I feel like in a lot of ways they can probably empathize with each other to quite a great extent because both of them sort of have to display a, a certain type of air for public appearances sake like Nervalette and I think Nervalette it's partly just that he's not like an outwardly emotional person but I think it's partly like it, I think it's hard for Nervalette to form like close connections with people because of the fact that he is in a position where he has to main to remain impartial and he cannot let like personal relationships sway him you know like he basically is like the spearhead of justice so he has to remain so he cannot be biased and as a result of that I think it's like it's a position that is kind of like quite isolating and you know the same is the case for Farina's role as well and it's, it's like I feel like they probably 
were able to relate to each other in ways that like other people couldn't and if, especially seeing like Fosalor just so kind of vulnerable at the end there like uh man it just it, it just it just really gets you it just really gets you when you think about that we too seize the opportunity on top to of everything else okay yeah you obtained power Traveler, just now now that the oratories can no longer function mm. i require an executor to help me mete out justice that's me that's my job the root of the calamities befalling fontaine the beast that enacts the prophecy its name is the all-devouring all come devouring with me, narwhal. Oops, I didn't mean to click. The hour of execution has come. Oh, let's go. let's get this way, old man. Oh my god. Okay. All right. Okay. Okay. Dang, that thing is huge. Jesus Christ. That is a big boy. That is a very big boy. Oh my god, he's a huge boy. Good lord. Holy, he's a dog. Oh, he is thick. Oh, God, he's okay. Um, oh, Lord, I wasn't really prepared for this. Uh, can I, like, can I, can I, uh, auto attack you a couple times? Yeah, okay. Um, oh, he, he coming for my ass, man. He coming for my ass. Okay, can I, little bit of, little bit of chunkage right there. Okay. Thank goodness that I have Zhongli. I feel like I'd be getting my ass kicked right now if I didn't have Zhongli. Uh, where are you? Where are you, Budski? Where are you, buddy, Brosker? Can I, uh, can I quickly ult, 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 ult? Oh my god, he's so thick, bro. How am I supposed to kill this thing? Can I, uh, can I ult, 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 Oh, god! Oh god. Oh Jesus Christ. Okay, uh to effectively destroy uh, Oh god, I got to destroy this thing. Okay. Uh Okay. Okay, 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 okay. Oh, I'm stressed. <laughs> I'm stressed. <laughs> oh my god, it takes like no damage, man. You take no damage. You take no damage at all. Holy Jesus. Okay, alright, alright, okay. I feel like I am doing literally nothing to this guy. Holy Jesus, he is thick. No, it's good, 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 it's all part of the plan. Hey, yo, Zhongli shield freaking clutches. Oh my god. Oh, oh my, what, what? Huh? Excuse me? Excuse me? I'm 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 doing what now? Uh, who is this guy? Who is this guy? <laughs> the all devouring narwhal has like a freaking what is this like a human form? To destroy? I gotta use the power of Oh Jesus Christ, okay. Uh I'm just gonna keep hitting them. I'm just gonna keep hitting them. I got the power, baby. I should probably shield. Okay, yep. Nope, we're good. Woo. I'm using the power, man. I'm using the power. Oh my god, this music is sick, and I'm really enjoying it. What I'm not enjoying is the fact that I uh, do, like, no damage at all. How do I use this power? Oh, okay. I, I think I did it. I think I did that correctly. I believe. I'm gonna I'm gonna kite him. Oh, please, please, please! I don't want tickles. Please, I don't want tickles. I'm not interested. Oh, I'm not interested. Please, 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 please stop bullying me. Please stop bullying me. I'm sorry for whatever I did to upset you. I wasn't. I, I'm sorry for upsetting you, sir. Please, no bully. Please, no bully. Here, have a, have some booba sword to the face. How does that feel? That feels good, right? Feels you real good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I thought. That's what I thought. That's what they tell me. They tell me it feels good. Okay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, all right. Okay. We're back to big boy. Oh, huh. cutting. Thank God. <laughs> oh my God. Wait, do, uh, did I do that? Me? Oh, I did. Oh, I think Nervalette did that. Never mind. <laughs> that, I thought that was like, that was all me, baby. Ooh. Ooh. Wait, yo, where he going? Huh? <gasps> oh! <laughs> oh! <laughs> she just yeeted! <laughs> oh! My god! She really just 
just yeeted him in there like a freaking rag doll. Thanks for <gasps> helping with the cleanup. Should have been my job, but <gasps> oh well. Oh my god. <laughs> it was just supposed to be a short private training session for me. Up uh, I didn't think that my disciple and my master's pet would start brawling the in the meantime. That would that is a true. Oh my god. Okay, what a woman. Well, I don't actually, even know what to say. I had a feeling that it would happen at some point. Uh, they bumped into one another earlier than I thought. Jesus Christ. The wonder. I suppose I'll have to swing my sword three million times as penance. <laughs> Your master's pet. Yeah, dude, that thing was like nothing to her. She just freaking condensed it into like an abyss ball and chucked it. That power. Dang. Who are you exactly? That's my girl. That's my woman, Skirk. Hey. Oh my god. Hyman has an idea. From what she said earlier, she must be oh, child's master. She is. Skirk, oh right? Oh my god. She is so beautiful. <laughs> impression that she was the less talkative person. Oh, God. Oh, I feel like I'm in the presence of, of, of a regal queen. I simply did not have anything to say to the weak. But you, Dang. on the other hand, managed to defeat the all-devouring narwhal without using power from beyond this world. Dang, dude, her design is so cool. I like how her tights, the, it's like moving. That's so cool. So you may speak to me as equals. Hey, yo, let's go. Uh, what sort of person would take the all-devouring narwhal as a pet? Yo, what the heck? I have to agree. It's a strange use of a planet's primordial waters just to raise an all-devouring narwhal. Yeah. That kind of power is wasted on it. It's not cooperative. I it yeah, it seems and voracious. I have more important things to do with my time than pet sitting. The only thing that creature has going for it is its looks. Yeah, I mean, I, he does. A, he's pretty cool looking. I'll, I'll agree on that. All in all, it fails as a pet. Yeah, probably not the the pet that we want to keep in our presence, hey, most likely. Miss Kirk, uh, I think you might have missed the point. <laughs> She's like over here debating whether or not it makes a good pet. The point <laughs> being. Almost destroyed an entire nation. Uh huh. Yeah. So, what sort of person is your master? Well, child's master's master. Yeah, Wait, child's it? like grandmaster. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, right. So, you don't know him. Sorry, I uh -huh. assumed you did. Okay, interesting. His name is Sertologi. Sertologi, yo. Oh my god, she is. Oh, she is so beautiful, dude. Look at. Oh my. I love her eyes. I love her eyes. Uh -huh. Sertologi. I am huh? unfamiliar with that I name. I do, you and me both. Huh. So Master is insufficiently famous. Hmm. Huh. How should I describe okay. him? Then? Have you heard of the name The Foul? Like the Foul Legacy? Yeah. The Foul? Foul Legacy? Still nothing. Okay, no. Well, Alright, okay. How about the visionary? Oh. Vetterful near then? But, uh, gold Rhine daughter. I uh, visionary sounds interesting. Whoa, that one we've heard. Rhine daughter's part of the Hexen circle. Oh, okay, right okay. Now, right? Oh, oh, okay, 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 okay. Mm. So you do know that name? Okay. To be honest, I also heard all of those names and titles from my master. Mm. I don't actually know them either. Okay. Oh my God, dude, look at her shoes too. Like I, oh God, I can't stop. Like, uh, I can't stop looking at her design. But I suppose you understand now, yes? My master is likely a similar sort to Rhine Daughter. They are mm. both pursuing some form of perfection. Interesting. Okay. Wait, didn't you also mention a visionary? Visionary, person? yeah. Hyman didn't quite catch their name. Actually, never mind that. Ah. I believe it expedient ah. to inform you. Oh, okay. That the all devouring narwhal used up nearly all oh. its strength fighting you. Hey, yo, let's go. You were a worthy opponent. Such roiling hydro energies will prove difficult for the planet's deep seas to digest. Mmm. As such, the fontaine back on the surface has most likely been thrown into chaos. Yeah, I. Ye, I okay, so we should probably get back to fontaine. In other words, the prophecy that you've been fretting over. Oh, no! Full oh, oh, no, that's not what? good. Oh, God, okay. Uh, there's a little bit to be surprised about Paimon. I didn't think it was going to be happening right now, though. I thought, like, we defeated the narwhal and then we would be. Or not the narwhal, the whale. I thought we would be good now. Or what? It was a narwhal, right? It was a whale. Uh, anyways, I, I thought. Uh, ah! 
Okay, uh, it is natural after all. The prophecy will surely come true. We knew this and accepted it. Yeah, I didn't think it was gonna be happening right now. I still thought that maybe, like, y you know... Okay, anyways, however... Not to worry. Fosalor has already managed to deceive the heavenly principles. Yeah. So, does that- okay, but she, so she just gives the heavenly principles. The people will all be dissolved into the waters, and only Farina will remain, weeping on her throne. Hmm. Oh! Um. Uh, okay. Only then will the sins of the people of Fontaine be washed away. Dang. Okay. Wh what happens n now that this is? Oh, okay, we're good. Okay, we're good. We're good. Okay. So this is what we meant. Okay. Okay. Got it, got it, got it. I wasn't quite sure. I didn't quite understand what was gonna happen when Fosalor made the sacrifice. I get it now, because like that's that's why Nervalette judged that like it's okay for them to remain human. Okay. Oh! We're good! Okay, thank goodness. Y'all, we're chilling! We're all good. That's great. Hey, yo! Let's go! Yes! <laughs> all hands initiate emergency rescue! Let's go! Oh, let's forget we have freaking claws! Oh, yo, this is so badass. Oh my god. Oh, this is so cool. Oh my god. Yo, this is so cool! Dang! Let's freaking go! And Fremenay's here? Yes! Best boy! And Lynette, nice. Very nice! Let's go! Look! The water's receding! Yay! Oh, I'm so happy! I really wasn't sure what was gonna happen. I was so distracted by my emotions that I didn't fully process, like, what... Oh, so lords. What the prophecy was wrong? Let's go! <laughs> I didn't fully process what Fosilor's sacrifice truly meant. Uh, I was still up in my feelies. <gasps> oh, I'm happy for you, my girl! I'm happy for you! that she's holding a flower pot because in her like in her like a weird uh collective conscious oceanid like kind of dream sequence it wasn't really really a dream but in her like trial thing like before that she was talking to a woman and the woman talked about like like giving her some flower seeds or something and then i think navia was like do we have a pot for those so it's like kind of a nice callback to that what soil can still give birth to new bloom miss navia mm. hope is like seeing a small cookie when you're starving late at night you mm. just need a little of it. Aww. Skyship Winglet, Boon or Bane of the Fontaine Research Institute. That's so cool! The various disputes that have arisen on account of Mr. Edwin have mm. suddenly become a shield over the Institute. 
With Julia uh, turning out to be a once overlooked <laughs> Yo, let's go. People always call the first researcher mad, but few know what to call mm. the second. And should that latter person achieve a miracle, mm. they would find it all the harder to find a word with which to classify him and his team. Oh, this was so cool. This thing came in so clutch. Wow. Paimon barely recognizes the people in the reports. Mm. Is this really Julia? <laughs> they sound like real big shots. They might have been real big shots from the start. Uh, we just didn't meet them in that capacity. What do you think? Pretty enthralling, huh? The Steambird's idea was pretty simple. With the disaster just having passed, mm. we would print a free edition packed to the margins with good news to calm people down. I like it. I wish more news outlets would do that. <laughs> the value for these big scoops lies in their inevitable follow-ups. Mm. We'll publish further reports and go into the stories behind those people. Hey, Charlotte's got it all planned Everyone out, baby. Jurier created a true flying ship, mm. while Navia is leading people in the reconstruction of their home. Hmm. I'm sure that these stories could draw even your well-traveled eye. Indeed. The articles do make me curious about how things will play out. I am still very curious. Like, I want to know more about... Um, Arlecchino and like the House of the Hearth and just like the Fatui in general. I'm assuming that will probably be going in that direction, maybe in like the next Star Conquest, possibly. Hyman's curious too! Uh, wait a minute. Didn't we watch everything happen from start to finish? What's there to be curious about? <laughs> Bye, Mon. And that's exactly why I'd like you to come conduct interviews with me. Oh! You're the best incubators of news. Oh, if you yeah, noticed. baby. I'm and an incubator you, of news. Rat, I'm sure I'll get to see that Duke. <laughs> Bro, no, yo, let me handle the Risley interviews. Let me handle that, my girl. Uh, are you sure? Hasn't he turned you down several times already? Don't worry. He, there's no way he would turn us down. We've got it. Oh, this time will be different. <laughs> Let's head to Poisson first and then make a trip to the fortress. I will gladly make there a trip to the fortress. Let me know when you get there. Okay. Oh, I'm excited to go to the fortress. Send me to the fortress, please. Oh, my goodness. More than anything in the world, I would love to go to the fortress, baby. Okay, we gotta go back to Poisson first. And then we're saving the Duke for last. Mm hmm. Alright, let's go to Poisson. Poisson. Oh, we gotta go. It looks like it's a little bit down from us. Alright. A little bit lower. Hello! Hello, hello, hello! Navia! She's talking to, is this guy like a Fatui? A Fatui guy? Oh, it's you. What brings you all here? Oh, you know, we just came to see you and your hey, beautiful self. Have a look around. Yeah, you know, just, just perusing. I'm here to update myself on how things are going here. Hmm? Oh, the Fatui are here oh, too. Oh, oh, ho, ho! Uh, uh, let me introduce you. This is Mr. Garunt Snezhevich. Snezhevich! He represented the Nave in sending us a large amount of supplies and is helping with our work. Is Mr. Snezhevich from Snezhnaya? Our residents are hard at work as well. Thanks to everyone, work is progressing mm. nicely. We've lost a lot of people, but we're yeah. moving forward. That will have to be enough. That's all you can do. Man, I'm still upset about Melus and Silver. Hello, God. I'm a big fan of yours. Dang. I especially like that article you wrote last year about fun Fatih's Stray Cats. Cats Dang! Yo, even the Fatui are fans. But if you don't mind, could you not emphasize our role too much in your report? Ah. Uh. It's not charity we're doing here. Oh, okay. We just happen to share the same interests as the speaker. No, okay, all right, okay. I get it, I get I it. I get where you're coming from. I'll keep it as simple as possible. Or would you be willing to feature as friendly, friendly neighbors? Friendly neighbors? Yeah, that could be a good way to put it. That would be fine. Thanks. I mean, he seems like a nice guy. <laughs> oh, you're back too. Clorinda. We finished laying down the construction hmm. materials. It'll be another hour before the workers yeah. are able to go over there. Okay. Huh? You're here too, Clorind? Oh, it's nice to see that things are like steadily becoming more natural between Navia and Clorinda. Well, her reputation's greatly risen after that whole dual mm. business with Miss Farina. So she's here in Poisson to wait out the heat. Ah, uh, all <laughs> it's right, popular. All right. She really came here to help me out. Aww. There's too much to consider in the reconstruction of Poisson. Hmm. Vespina has need of more decision makers. And, well, 
I do already happen to be connected to Mr. Callus. Mm, okay, yeah, that's fair. Wait, Good point. Just a moment. Do you mind me asking a few questions? <laughs> you know about how you felt before the duel. Uh, about what it was like <laughs> facing down a god. There's lots of exciting material there, I bet. <laughs> <sighs> Forget it. I'm sure you can find a better theme than that, Miss Charlotte. <laughs> oh, I see you're the same as always. Yeah, classic Lorraine. Do me a favor for Navia's sake. <laughs> well, if we're talking about doing things for my sake, you might as well just take a few more photos hey, of me. Yeah. Or of the traveler. Group picture. It's better than wasting time persuading Clorand at any rate. <laughs> of course I will. I'm not gonna let her off that easy. Mm. All right, then everyone who wants to be in the photo, gather up. Yay! Group photo! <laughs> That's cute! Cute. Did Paimon look cute? Did Paimon look cute in it? Not bad. <laughs> Your addition really helped the composition of the. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Ramon's like, on, yeah, damn straight. <laughs> Charlotte takes more pictures of Poisson to the clicking of shutters. All right. Da -da 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 I'll be back here later anyway, so uh, let's call it a day. All righty. Is it time for fortress? Is it fortress time? <laughs> You're very quick. <laughs> Speed is of the essence when it comes to the news, and yep. freshness is the key. She is very efficient. Also, not to brag, but I'm pretty good at building connections. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, Who knows? Mm -hmm. I might eventually get that interview with you after all, Miss Clarence. Mm, she's coming for you next, Clarence. Oh, wow, you really do have that never say die spirit. I'm impressed. Me too. <laughs> I'll hazard a guess that this is how you got that interview at the Fortress of Maripede. Mm -hmm. You already knew she was going. Well, you're well informed. <laughs> Let me make a guess too. I asked Sijuin, who told Monsieur Nervillette, and he ah, told you, right? Oh ho ho! That's a very complete information check. <laughs> I love this guy. He's just like here, throwing in random interjections. In truth, all Monsieur Nervillette asked me was, "When did the fortress become so friendly towards the media?" I told him that it was best not to speak too soon. Mm. There's no guarantee that Ridesley will make a personal <laughs> appearance. Mm -hmm. You're right. I've got to treasure every moment I have with them. In which case, I'll be making a move. Yes, out. go! Uh, stay safe now. And tell me if you hear anything interesting. I'll treat you to afternoon tea in exchange. Okay, that seems like a good deal. Seems like a good deal. Oh, let's go visit Risley. Oh, I'm so excited. Okay. <laughs> I wonder if we'll see Risley down here while we're here. Oh. Mm -mm 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 wow. Guess we're here again, huh? Yeah. There's a real nostalgic feeling to this place. Right? I love it here, man. Like, okay, I really hope that after we, like, leave Fontaine, that, like, the Fortress of Merafi doesn't get completely forgotten about. Like, I hope we'll still have some quests here eventually. Like, I hope it will be maybe relevant again sometime in the future. Like, I just freaking love it here, man. I just love it. Looks like you've been missing us. <laughs> He did, he did! Of course. <laughs> I'm here to welcome you and our dear Miss Charlotte, whom our good head nurse Let's recommended go. to me. Oh, so happy! It's an honor to finally meet the much rumored dude. <sighs> thank you for consenting to my visit to the fortress, sir. Oh god, I love him no so need much. To thank me. But that said, I <laughs> shouldn't be the focus of your interview. I trust you recall our agreement. Oh, he's so handsome. Of course, of course. Mm. Alright then, this way. Follow you anywhere. <laughs> Dang, Jurio looks uh, so happy. <laughs> Lorvine also looks really happy. Wow, everyone's so happy hey, to see us. No need to be so nervous. I've already taken all the. They're a little camera need. shy. They're a little um, camera shy. Miss Charlotte, do these pictures really need to be published on the cover of the Steambird? And why are you afraid that your little secret relationships are gonna get exposed? It would seem that Miss Lorvine doesn't want her face to appear beside <laughs> her <with> Mr. Jurier. <laughs> hmm? Lol. Gotta so love these two, don't man. Say things like that. <laughs> He's like, don't make it seem like something that it's not, even though it actually is. <laughs> but it looks like dear Mr. Jurier denies it. Mm. Might this interview be very important to you then? Oh, uh, bro, I just want to stand next to Risley and eat some popcorn. <laughs> no, I, I, I just... This is my first time being mm. interviewed, and I'm very thankful to the Steambird for 
Yeah. <laughs> now, I might not look it, but I actually did meet Mr. Edwin once. Mm. And I'll be honest, I enjoyed chatting with you more. Oh, oh. definitely got more of that genius vibe going Dang, on. Dang, Charlotte knows what she's doing. She that knows what she's doing. about a miracle, the ark that saved the people. Why, you recreated a miracle <laughs> like me. an emissary of love. <laughs> <Universally> just like, <laughs> same energy, dude, same energy. But still, if I might ask, where's that flying ship now? <laughs> <laughs> Looks like Charlotte's trying to get herself another exclusive scoop. That one's a secret. That one's a secret. I have to apologize, but that ship is presently in the bowels of our factory. Mm. I'm afraid it won't be easy for you to get a shot uh -huh. of it. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Really? Well, then in that case, could I have an interview with you to look <laughs> for that loss? Oh, Charlotte. <laughs> no shame. Just no shame. She really does know how to squeeze opportunities for all their worth. Admirable, to you uh, admirable know trait. You answer, I'm afraid. Best you interview our head nurse instead. Mm. Or perhaps you'd like to take <laughs> another photo of this, this couple, couple of researchers? You didn't have to say of researchers. It's okay. You didn't have to add that part. Did you really have to use the word couple? <laughs> <laughs> well, then, two solo photos will do. Is my hair messed up? Please, <laughs> someone help me have a look. <laughs> Things sure are getting pretty lively here. We are a lively bunch. I've seen this kind of thing before. Lively bunch down in the fortress oh. we are. Seems like everyone's Sweet. here. Would any of you like to try this new drink oh, I came up with? Yeah. Uh, mm, uh. Ah, Sijuin. I'm sure that Charlotte would love uh, to try uh, it. Hey, Miss Charlotte. Why don't you, uh, take some pretty photos of our head nurse? Uh-huh. Hmm? You can uh, try sure. her drink, Come too. On, Sijuin, yeah. over this way. Let's find a brighter spot. <laughs> She's so cute. Uh, oh, uh, sure. Uh, do I have to smile? <laughs> She's so cute. So, how have things been at the fortress? Yeah, now that it's just now that it, now, now that we're finally alone. <laughs> same old, same old, as you can see. Mm. Fontaine's undergone some changes, but yeah. this place is still more or less the same. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that's fair. Other than that flying ship, I got a tad too much attention. <laughs> I mean, it was pretty cool. That's why I decided to let the interview go through. We should direct more public opinions toward the behind-the-scenes heroes. Am I right, Mr. Jerrier? Miss Lurveen? Mm-hmm. You're too kind, sir. I believe that you two should have your day in the sun. Yeah. Not that you would want that. Mm -hmm. Just a pity. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just leave the spotlight to you two. Mm-hmm. You walk with Risley for a while and share news from above ground. Lots of things happened that day, huh? Yeah, oh yeah, it's anyway, been a day. Anyway, that Harbinger, I'm not sure you remember, but his three young followers are still waiting for his <gasps> return. Oh, yeah! He sure did win them over, huh? Yeah, those I'll guys! Tell them there's good news and bad news. Hmm. The good being that their boss seems fine. Yeah. The bad being that they must face extended sentences uh, for abetting his escape. Uh, uh, I feel like they probably will, will be understanding of that. Oh. For you too? Yeah, tell me more about you. What change can there be? The fortress will keep chugging along, and so will my duties. Mm. As to what Miss Farina's departure will mean for the nation, and if our okay. laws and governance will be transformed, we'll leave those to the folks in the overworld. Yeah, I wonder what Farina's gonna do now that she can just live her life as as like a person. Hey everyone, the photo shoot's done. Awesome, let's freaking go. But you should really get a photo of Melvin while we're down here. Good. He's the main attraction, In that really. Case, let's call it a day here. Okay. Bye. Thanks for your cooperation. Kind of don't want to leave, on, but let's go. You know, Until it's that's time, okay. Everyone. I'll it's okay. I'll just come back down every single there day to say hi. Next time. Oh, there. Oh, there will be a next time. Maybe. Who knows? I will make sure. Of I it. might write a story about the underwater factory next time. <laughs> Until then. Okay. Bye. Oh, oh, I love. Right. I freaking love Last Wesley. Stop the docks. I love him so much, man! Okay, uh, wait, yo, hold on. Let's just, uh, let's say goodbye to Melvin while we're here, okay? Also very important, we gotta say goodbye to Melvin. Where did I go? I think I went there. I think I went the long way. Oops. Oops, uh, where's the cafeteria? Where is the cafeteria? I need to see Melvin before I leave the premises. There's Melvin! Look at him. He's just as handsome as I remember him. Oh. Goodbye, Melvin. You keep cleaning your spot. What oh, good boy. No time to lose. What oh, good boy. Okay, anyways, we gotta go all the way down. Oh god, wait, I haven't unlocked this part of the Oh, thank the Lord. It's okay. We've got a we got a we oh we got the statue of the seven. <laughs>
I thought we were gonna have to walk all the way there. <laughs> okay, uh, we gotta go to the harbor. Can I just, like, yeet myself off of this and go for it? Oh, yeah, baby. Oh, it's Lenny! And Lynette! And Fremine! Hi, Mitsita! Oh. They really are here! Journalist instinct, Anabia man. Anabia mentioned that she stayed in touch with Linny and the others after ah, work. Ah, okay. Apparently, they've been at the docks distributing the, the strange... The magic pockets! Is. Let's go! Let's freaking go! Dude, are they finally gonna use them for groceries like I suggested? Traveler, Paimon. Ah, and Miss Charlotte, too. Hello! Hello! Would you like a magic pocket? Yes! What sort of gadget is it? It's... It's a magic pocket. It's a wondrous bag that can be used to carry many things. <laughs> the water level has returned to normal. But if you see any of your things floating around, you can use <laughs> this to carry them. Yeah. Or you could trick a friend into doing it for you. Mm-hmm. Very like true. Friend. Hmm. I wonder which of my friends would fall for that. Hmm. <laughs> uh, our expressions you could just are so make a friend like Fremenet here. Isn't that right, Fremine? Fremine! <sighs> Is this what you meant by I'll, I'll help, help you make, make some more some friends? More friends. <laughs> We're already friends! To be honest, that sounds pretty sweet. Could I have your card? <laughs> oh, God! Oh, no! I don't know if you want Charlotte's. T oh, God! I don't know if you want to give Charlotte your number. Uh, oh, uh, sure. Uh, please. Write down my address. Girl gonna be at your door like every single day. Sure working hard to help Fremenet socialize. <laughs> he was the one who proposed doing this. Hey! He even wants to assist in our magic shows. Yeah! That's nice! Sounds like that would suit him. Yes, I was planning to first introduce Pear as an assistant, hmm. and later Fremenet himself. Yeah, let's go! In the future, I think we can leave underwater escape magic yeah, to Yeah, he's you. probably a good fit. Probably fits the and bill. said, would anyone want to see a diver escape underwater? I, I would. I'd be down. Oh, it'll work out. Every journey begins with the first step. Mm -hmm. He'll become a part of our show eventually. Yeah! Lynette, could you come over? Miss Charlotte says she wants to take a picture of us. No, this is such a nice Got conclusion. It. Oh, Mr. Gardo boy. My, that Charlotte is rather perceptive. Hmm. She got rid of everyone the moment she realized I had something to say to you. <laughs> so, how have things been, Traveler? Dang, Charlotte. Charlotte is very perceptive. I'm doing all Father right. says that you did a great deal during the latest events. Mm -hmm. She's very grateful for your contributions to Fontaine. I mean, she also came in pretty clutch. Oh, that's all right. We were more than happy to help. So, what's she doing now? Yeah, when do we get to find out more about our luck, you know? Oh, I guess you haven't heard. Uh huh? Well... Yeah. After Lady Farina left, Father huh? and Monsieur Nervilet opened negotiations oh. during which he gave Fontaine's gnosis to her oh. as a diplomatic gift. Uh, oh, wait, we just we just like we just we just gave it to her? Just like that? We just uh, we just gave it to the foot to the okay. Uh, oh, okay. I mean, sure. I guess I'm I'll, I'll trust Nervilet that he knows what he's doing. <laughs> a diplomatic gift. That's what I'm saying. We just we just gave it away yes, to the Fatui. I was quite surprised uh, at first myself. Okay. But when I okay. It over, there were actually a number of things going for it. Oh, okay. All right. It could have Explain. Been done as an apology for the incident with Lord Child, uh. or as thanks for his help in tying the all-devouring narwhal down. Okay. Okay. But then, like, why we could all we could have given it to Child? Furthermore, Father did also lend significant aid to. Well, okay. I mean, that part is true. Song. That part is true. But I don't know if it was wise to give the gnosis well, away. I Paimon's asking the questions. I would agree, but I've also heard that it seems that hmm. Mr. Nervilet has had a significant change of heart regarding the matter. Okay, uh, okay. all right. I mean, again, I trust Nervilet's judgment, but it, it does seem a little bit strange that we were just like, yeah, take the gnosis. Uh, so there's some reason for this that only Nervilet okay. knows about? All right, maybe there's yeah, maybe there's something that went on behind the scenes during their negotiations, some sort of reason, something. I'm sure there's a reason. I suspect yeah. you'll have to ask him about that yourself. Mm. Ah, yes. Speaking of which, <gasps> I did see him strolling around the entrance to the fortress. Wait, really? Of how how did we how did we miss him? 
We didn't need. Well, uh, isn't he real busy and stuff? Pilot didn't think he'd have the time for that. Hmm. But back to the topic. The gnosis was given to the knave, right? Yeah. What, what about, about my Pilot? boy, child? He kind of just got like yeeted. Uh, was that the abyss that he got yeeted into? Like it seemed like Skirk just kind of <laughs> chucked him in there. They say that he's returned to Snezhnaya to recover from his wounds. Oh, okay. I hear that the recent disaster really did a number on his health. I mean, yeah, he was fighting the whale for, like, multiple days, it sounds like. It sounds like uh, Nervalette said a long time. I'm assuming that means, like, multiple days, so... Uh, well, I guess I can now call him one of my war buddies. <laughs> when you think about it, we've had loads of run-ins with the Fatui. To think we'd be allied with them this time. Yeah, that's kind of cool. That's kind of cool that we were actually allied with Fatui this time. I was super excited to learn more about the, the Fatui. Like, that's one of the things... That I think I'm most intrigued by in Genshin is I just find all of the Fatui members so fascinating. Like their designs are so interesting, and I really want to know more about them. So shocked by such a simple switching huh? of sides. Hello. Hum <laughs> ha. Oh, hello, father. father. Well, well, what do you know? Come to the docks to see how my children are mm -hmm. doing and meet the traveler by chance. Yeah. Please do not pay my accomplishments in Fontaine too much mind. <laughs> I would have done them regardless. Oh, oh my gosh, she is. Oh, are you love our luck, you know. Take the Gnosis back to Snezhnaya? Yeah, what are we doing with the Gnosis? That is our duty as Harbingers. Okay. Yes. What are, what is there? are there like plans for Don't it? Don't be too preoccupied with sides. Okay. The goal of the Fatui concerns not a single place or person, but the entire world. Okay. With such a grand goal in mind, it is inevitable that we must wear many masks. Hmm. Okay. That's fair. Switching my masks. Is something I've always done. And see, that's such an interesting sentence from her. Like, I just want to know more about her. Um, will you keep to your position? Well, that depends on many things. Mm. No one truly knows what the future holds. Fair. What good is honesty if you can't rely on it forever? True. As for you, I very much look forward to our next. Uh, me too. Uh, good things cannot be achieved alone. And you've proved yourselves to be great partners. Oh, gosh, you flatter me. Actually, I just remembered something. Please help us deliver this. Oh! <sighs> uh, Alright. I'll remember to return it. Thank okay. you for keeping it safe for him this entire time. I mean, I hope she actually returns it, because all I'm saying is that, I mean, it seems like our lucky girl doesn't really give an F about child, but I guess we'll see. <laughs> And that's a wrap for me. And is the vision still huh? dead? Actually, you, you're. I'm curious. I wonder. I wonder. Will, will we get to see what the vision looks like? Is it still like dead, or has it been reactivated? Greetings, Miss Journalist. Oh, dude, man. Oh God, freaking! I love her pants. Uh, um, <laughs> hello. If I'm not mistaken, there are diplomatic channels I'll need to report to to take a photo of you. Oh, uh, okay. That is correct. Ah, okay. So forgive me, but I will not be able to serve as a subject in your Darn article. Darn it. However, feel that free been to a write scoop. as much as you'd like about our dear magicians mm. and our upcoming rookie talent. Hee <laughs> I, I will. <laughs> the sea breeze is quite pleasant. Mm. Oh, I shall continue my walk while the weather remains so agreeable. Farewell. Goodbye. I will be seeing you in the future. Farewell, father. Goodbye, father. Okay, I am so excited. Like, I cannot wait to see our lucky no more in the future. I'm so curious. She has such an intimidating presence. Mm -hmm. I didn't even dare to take it. It's a wonderful. Thankfully, I've already wrapped up all my pre-scheduled interviews. Hey! Oh, this will be more than enough for me to write about, I'm sure. I know, yeah, she's gonna have her hands busy Don't with be too nervous. writing, writing it Why all don't out, you man. Do the magic pocket before you go. Here, traveler, Paimon, you take one too. Thank you. I would love a magic Can pocket. That's right. <laughs> Funny. Yeah, I remember that. I was giving out magic pockets when we first met. Oh, I know. Sue. I remember nobody mm. wanted them. What do you know? I'm doing the exact same thing right now. So many things have happened, but the mm. pockets are still the pockets. <laughs> yep, indeed they are. I guess this must be life. Mm -hmm. We will all follow our own paths, mm -hmm. and serendipity will lead you to your fated friends. Yep, such is life. Many changes, but also some things do remain all constant. Right, then. 
We'll be handing out pockets in some other districts later, so we'll get going now. Have a good day, you two. Thanks! Oh, I love Winnie Lynette and Fromine. Nervalet, yes. Let's go find Nuvi. No time to lose. Ah! 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 They just messed me. Oh my God, dude! They just totally messed me up. <laughs> Holy Jesus! That doesn't fall. Okay. Oh my. Bro, you are you are kidding me right now. I can't even. Oh my God. I I I literally can't get up here. Oh my God. You're trolling me, Genshin. Ugh. Oh my. God. Oh my god. Better make sure I line myself up properly with the walkway before I do anything. Okay. <laughs> Hello. I feel like Nervalette's probably feeling a lot of feelings. I'm sure he's got a lot of feelings about everything that came to pass. Yeah, what are you doing here? Really? Oh, I suppose you must have met Mr. Linny. Mm. He took the time to greet me earlier when he passed this way. I did not see you when we were leaving the Fortress In of Meropede. In any case, you came at a good time. Huh. I was just considering reaching out to you to set up a meeting, so I may explain some things that I haven't had the time to before. Oh, is he going to tell us, like, what happened with Fossilor? Mm. With you being busy and all. Yeah, I'm sure that Nervalette's like extra busy well, now. Let's have it then. How is Fontaine actually saved? The whole business is still quite the mystery to us. Mm hmm. Um. Yeah, probably we, we need to get the explanation. <laughs> it is strange how words can often leave a bitter taste in the mouth when it finally comes time to say them out loud. Yeah, I'm sure he, I mean, again, I'm sure he's got, he's got a lot of feelings about everything that just happens. Nervalet sighs softly before telling you the truth concerning what he saw that day, and how are we going to feel about that? Fossilor deceived the heavenly principles and used Farina's endless performance to save Fontaine. Whoa. So that's what happened? Mm. I only saw Farina's part myself. Fossilor destroyed the divine throne of the Hydro Archon and restored mm -hmm. your power to you, transforming you into a fully fledged Dang. elemental dragon sovereign! Mm -hmm. But Paimon still doesn't quite get what you did to save the Fontanians from dissolving. Hmm. For me, the authority of the ancient dragons refers to absolute ah. control over the hydro element. Okay. Fontanians were incomplete humans born mm. of Egeria's use of the power of the primordial sea, with constitutions similar to that uh. of mimics. Okay. But so long as those primordial energies remain within them, I could use the ancient dragon's authority oh. to grant them true blood. Dang. After the fashion in which life was first brought into being on this planet. Wow. In other words, when I gave my verdict, Fontanians became true truly humans, human. And thus would naturally no longer be dissolved by water from the primordial sea. Fossilor mm. must have counted on you to make that decision yeah. as well. Your verdict was the key to making the prophecy appear to have come true while saving everyone. Aw, oh, dang, dude. Fossilor's sacrifice really hits hard because it's like, it's so crazy that Fossilor has just been like behind the scenes this whole time, having like planned all of this out, like already knowing that Nervalette would make that decision. Uh, you could say that it was at that moment that the Fontanians were finally truly born. Yeah. yeah. And in a manner of speaking, Fossilor finally managed to fulfill the original Hydro Archon's wish to turn Oceanids into real people too. Mmm. It seems from your expressions yeah. that you still have more things you wish to ask. Yeah. Ask away. I will tell you the truth as I know it. Okay. Um, about the initial verdict that was passed on child, yes, I am so curious about this. Why? I have investigated his case along many avenues, and I have learned that he once fell into an unknown mm. chasm when he was young. Yes. There, by chance, he awakened the all-devouring narwhal. Okay. But whether it be by sentiment or reason, that should not have been enough to consider him the root cause of the disaster. Yeah. At most, he would have had tangential liability. Mm -hmm. As for the judgment passed by the Oratrice during yeah, the trial, why was it guilty? whether it was due to that liability by association ah. or Fossilor deliberately using him to buy time ah. for us on the assumption that he would be able okay. to hold the creature off, I cannot say. So we don't know necessarily which it was, but both of those do make sense. Yes, Fossilor had Fontanians in mind the whole yeah. time. In the end, it was thanks to her that they finally became real humans. 
The ultimate sacrifice, um, man. Hold on a second. Paimon suddenly got another question. Yes. Yeah, the Spontaneans sure. hadn't yet become real humans. Were the children they had also transformed Oceanids? Yeah, how does that all work? <laughs> Life has always flowed like water. Do you recall how Fontanians would often come to the Fountain of Lucene to pray for children? Yes, yeah. I do remember that. Lynette said the fountain is where all the waters in Fontaine converge. Mm. In truth, even those couples did not know that such prayers were no mere custom. Oh. Instead, a form of ritual. Oh. Those Oceanids who were blessed within the spring water would okay. later descend as new humans in the oh. coming months. Oh. Uh, Ritual won't be mm. of any further use, but it'll probably live on as a local custom. Yeah, probably. Ask away. I will tell you the truth as I know it. Yeah, about Fontaine's future. Yeah, about that. Riley said Farina has already left. Yeah, where did she go? Ah, oh, Lady Farina. The people are only aware that her death sentence has not been carried out. Mm. She abdicated the post of Hydro Archon and left affairs related to that title to me mm. before leaving the Opera House. And it is kind of sad that, like, the people will never know how much both she and Fosalor sacrificed for their sake. I related Fosalor's words to her faithfully and completely. After hearing them, she seemed neither saddened nor comforted. Hmm, okay. She simply said that she was tired. I mean, yeah, to... she's earned it, man. <laughs> I'm sure she's very tired. Having said that, she then packed her things and moved okay. out of the opera house. Not unlike how an ordinary person might. Okay. Yeah, is she planning on- is she, is she gonna stay in Fontaine? I, I feel like she can't really stay in Fontaine, huh? She probably has to worry. go elsewhere. I will make arrangements to ensure that she will not want for food, clothing, board, or travel. Okay. In truth, I am somewhat happy for her. Yeah. The wear and tear on her spirit will, of course, take time to heal. Mm-hmm, yeah. But now that she no longer has to play the role of Fosalor the Hydro Archon, she can finally lay down mm. her burdens and lead a normal life. Yeah, that- what a nice change of pace that will be for her. After Fosalor passed Oops. on, the Oratrice also ceased to function. Okay. This matter will directly affect our trials. Hmm. After much careful consideration, I've decided to take over okay. its role in our courts. From now on, I shall hear cases and pass verdicts by myself. Fitting. I think that's very fitting. Looks like you're still considering stuff from the perspective of the Udex, huh? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that Nervlet's the perfect person to pass judgment. He's, I mean, for better or worse, he's so incredibly good at just re at remaining impartial, at remaining objective, at listening to the facts. I think he's the perfect person for As it. As an elemental dragon, there are indeed many things that I must do. But this power and this duty, in a manner of speaking, you could say that both were granted to me. Mm. As such, before I attend to my other responsibilities, I must first and foremost continue to serve Fontaine as its highest judge. Mm -hmm. The duty of the Hydro Sovereign and the duty of the Udex shall coexist within my person. Dang, that is, that's a lot for one person, but if anyone's up to the task, it's nerve -led. Additionally, the Hydro Archon's departure has brought about another problem. Mm. Which is that the Opera House shall no longer produce Indemnidium. Oh yeah, that's right. That's True. I kind of forgot that about that part. Was derived from the people's faith in the Hydro Archon, wasn't it? Mm. Wait, but the various mechs and machines in the city are all still okay. Where are they getting their energy from? Yeah, how does that all work? As I am now, I have full command over New Musia. Oh! And it can serve as a complete substitute. Hey! Another reason why I cannot quite leave Fontaine uh, immediately. That's fair, yeah, okay. Wow. This ancient dragon's authority stuff is really quite useful, huh? Mm-hmm. Ask away. I will tell you the truth as I know it. About Fontaine's Gnosis. Oh, that's right! They say you've given it to the name as a different. Yeah, explain system. that, please, because that came as a little bit of a Leaving shock. Aside their intentionality, the two Fatui Harbingers have indeed done much for us during this crisis. I mean, that's true, yeah. This sole remaining goal in Fontaine, at least at this point, would seem to be the Gnosis. Yeah. The Oratrice has ceased to function. The Hydro Archon's divine throne is now no more. And I do not need the Gnosis's power. Okay, but are they gonna do bad things with the Gnosis's as such, power? It has lost all meaning for Fontaine. Yeah, I mean, okay, I if mean, I do understand that, but... If the have designs, then we might as well accede to their request now, and avoid unnecessary conflict. Okay, I don't know if I completely agree with that logic, but uh, I, I, I trust them. Paimon thought you 
were just giving it to them out of gratitude to the knave and as an apology to child. I mean, I do, I, I do get, I get his perspective. I don't know if it was the right decision, but I trust Nervalette. Ask away. I will tell you the All right, one I'm more question about the next stop on my journey. We'll soon be heading to Natlan. Natlan, let's go! I'm afraid that I have little talent as a travel guide, so all I can do is tell you what I know about that land. Oh, oh, oh! Is there a date for Natlan, by the way? Do any of you guys know? If you, if you know, let me know down in the comment section. If, if there's been like an officially announced date for Natlan, oh, as baby. As far as I'm aware. Natlon can be said to be a nation of a dragons. A nation of dragons? A nation of dragons? You mean like you? Yo, please? Can I have a pet dragon? No, please. I suspect that I would not find myself welcome there. Oh, okay. Unlike right. ancient dragons such as myself, the dragons of Natlon have undergone oh. long years of development and evolution. Large numbers of them hmm. have entered a form of coexistence with humanity. Oh, yeah. That's going to be so cool. Natlon is also the nation of war. War ravages those oh. lands like an undying Okay, well, that, that part doesn't sound very cool. There is one other piece of information I got incidentally from my negotiations with the Knave that I believe may be useful to you. Okay. The harbinger known as the Captain <gasps> has thrown his hat into the endless ring of war. <laughs> So we're gonna meet him in Natlin. Oh. Sounds like a real tough customer. Seriously, everywhere you look, there's a Fatui oh. Harbinger doing their thing. Oh, I'm so excited. I suggest that you fully prepare yourself before going to Natlin. Oh, yeah. In the meantime, Fontaine's doors will always be open to Oh, you. I'm so excited Ask now. I will tell you the truth as I know it. I was already excited, but now I'm like even more excited. Okay, I have no more questions. Uh, Thank you. Hang on a sec. No, wait, but Paimon's not done. Paimon's not when done. When we spoke to Linny earlier, he mentioned that your attitude towards giving away the Gnosis had clearly changed. Oh, yeah, he that's right. But there might be some reason for it that only you were aware of. Hmm. Hmm. No wonder the House of the Hearth is <laughs> intelligence division. Yep. They are certainly sure. They are. So regarding this specific issue, I was just getting ready to share something with you. Okay. Uh, what is it? In truth, I exchanged some further words with that lady named Skirk oh, after Skirk. sending you two back to the surface. Oh! It went something like this. Okay. Well, we're going to head topside to see what's going mm. on. You hurry over soon as well, all right, Nervalet? Oh. Oh, he's so cool. What next? Hmm. Mm. The all devouring narwhal isn't here. Okay. So I'm no longer getting any interference. Okay. I can finally catch the scent of your power. What it's made it's of. It's pretty powerful, right? It is the authority of the planet's primordial dragons. But with something very similar to a god's curse mixed in. Ah, yep. It's quite a novel blend. Her sense of smell is uh, quite good. <laughs> I'm sure I've encountered something like this before. Oh. What was it again? Have you? I do not know what you speak of. She's encountered this before. Uh, of course. How could I forget? Okay. You should have the remains of the third descender on your person. Yes. Uh -huh. Remains? Huh? I've never heard of any such thing. Oh? Huh. According to your parlance, I believe it may be called a... Ah, uh, oh! Okay, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that much is true. After Fosalor's divinity faded, she handed her gnosis to me. Mm. But I fear I have never heard of it described in the manner that you just Yeah, did. that is an interesting way to describe I've it. I've been training with my master, the Fowl, ever since I was young. Okay. And I have never returned to the surface since. So most of the information I possess, I got from him. Okay. It is only natural for those who are greater than humanity to possess a different sort of common sense. Which is why there are so many problems in our attempts to communicate with humans. All right. Regardless... You should probably get rid of objects of misfortune. Misfortune. To prevent any disasters from befalling you. Oh, okay. To live in itself is a blessing. But once a person dies, the bonds he once oh. had with this world shall all turn to curses. Okay. What do you mean by that? Is she saying that the Gnosis is like a, a curse? Or <sighs> am, I no not, need to fret. am I misunderstanding? These are just my personal thoughts. And my reason for no longer wishing to return to the surface. I 
can't tell if she was getting personal or if she means like like because of Fosalor's sacrifice that the Gnosis is like a curse and then Fosalor also like placed a curse on Farina, so like maybe the, is the Gnosis itself like a curse now? This third descender you refer to, who are they? Mm. And when did they die? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Master never mentioned them to me. Perhaps it just wasn't that important for me to know. Dang it, Skirk! If you're interested, though, I okay. could ask him. I'll be sure to pass the answer on to you next time. Okay. Next time? You believe we will meet again? Apparently we will. I do. Wait. I have a disciple of my own. Oh, yeah. I? Perfect. He can be the messenger. Messenger then. child. Perfect. That's what she okay. told me. Okay. Whether it would prove useful or not. Huh. I wanted to pass that information on to you. All right. That's good. That's that's interesting. Not quite sure what to make of that yet, but very interesting information. The, remains of the, the third, third descender? descender. Yeah, what is so that? That's kind of crazy. Actually are. Kinda just thought they looked like chess pieces. But yeah, like who is the third descender? Is it like a one person? All or? the same, assuming that there was no misunderstanding or special metaphor at play. Mm. That is what she meant to say. Hmm. And she said that it would bring misfortune and that you should check it. Yeah. It to the <laughs> I love it. <laughs> if she speaks the truth, then I would simply be putting Fontaine at unnecessary risk by keeping it here. Nice. Okay. All right. No, it, it makes a lot more sense now. It makes a lot more sense now. A descender. She mentioned one of them. I am the fourth descender. Oh, one that the gnosis are related to descenders, and two that the one who came before me has already died. I guess that you might already mm. be familiar with this concept, but I did not expect you to be one of them. Let's freaking go! I'm a descender, baby. That means that the gnosis, which are exceedingly element compatible and can even enhance mm. elemental abilities, do indeed come from oh, the third descender. Oh, that's so interesting. Mm. I wonder. Probably. Also possess similar That's properties. probably why the traveler can wield like every element. Like, uh, like being able yeah. to use elemental powers without a vision. Mm. That does sort of count as special compatibility, right? Yeah. No, no, let's not think about this stuff right now. <laughs> it just feels it's too much, man. We've been through too much to do all this thinking. Comparing the traveler to the dead third descender and all. Don't worry, I won't die That's so easily. I'm pretty but durable. <laughs> Fine one. Let's child recovers. Let's get some more answers out of him. Or mm. go look for his master and get the answers that way. I mean, why por qué no los dos? I too believe it unwise to make too many blind guesses mm. when information is lacking. The same is true of being at court. Yeah. All right. Whatever the case, it seems like the crisis here in Fontaine's over for now. Yay! Oh, this is so good. Yes. All of Fosalor's efforts were for this moment as well. Ah, man. But she sacrificed herself in the end as a god. Mm -hmm. And she suffered through all those years as a human. Was that really what she wanted? Hmm. I suppose that would be the mystery of yeah. a god's will. Can you understand the will of the I gods? Not. But once in a while, I too would guess that if wishes were like the clouds in the sky... Hmm. They will one day return to the earth as raindrops. Hmm. Life flows like water, and rain is the final answer. Yeah. The water levels may sometimes tilt one way or another, but the rain falls fairly upon all. It's a nice way of looking at it. And what ultimately is the difference between the rains that fall upon all of us? Hmm. I love Nervalette. Oh, that was so good. Oh, that was so good. Man, dude, that was that was really good. That was so so good. I'm just gonna see if Nervalt has anything to say really quickly before we continue. It seems from your expressions that you still have. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I'll tell you the truth as I know. No more I questions. That you fully prepare your okay. Cool. All right. Dang, this was so good. Oh my gosh. I think this is probably the best experience I've ever had playing through a story in Genshin Impact. Like I just. Everything about Fontaine, I just love it. Like, I love the presentation of things. I love that everything is not as it seems. I love the characters. Farina, oh my gosh, what a compelling character. Like, I, oh my gosh, I just... 
there's something that just hits different about a character who has just been so self-sacrificing for that many years like that just it's it's again it's like it, it feels so bittersweet because it's like yeah we got our happy ending but at the same time it is a little bit sad and a little bit bitter that these people don't know all that she sacrificed for them because she sacrificed so so much and it's like you could see her sort of losing her sense of self like she was starting to lose herself and i mean i can't blame her but that was just i mean again what a, what a well-written and compelling character like i i love how they wrote farina that was so so good i love what they did with the plot like everything at least for me uh, that has happened throughout Fontaine, throughout the story quest in Fontaine, has felt very justified. Like, at first I was kind of thinking to myself, hmm, like, I was nervous, I really just given them the gnosis? But then, like, they've, they've shown me why. Like, that c makes complete sense, that it's a curse. It's kind of, it's kind of, it's kind of cheeky of Nervalette to, to give them, like, a curse, basically. Um, the thing with, like, Fontanians turning into Oceanids, again, I was I was wondering, like, is it gonna be genetic? Like, that seems like a bit of a cop-out. But nope, turns out they were Oceanids all along. Like, that's what I mean, is that everything feels justified. Like, it's just so well-written. And I enjoyed this so, so, so much. I hope that you guys enjoyed it, too. Thank you guys so much for going on this journey with me. I hope that you did enjoy. Don't forget to like the video. Leave a comment down below with any thoughts that you would like to share. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you do enjoy these types of playthroughs. Shout out to Rune. Thank you so much for being a tier 2 Dino Nuggy for channel memberships. I really do appreciate it. And thank you, everybody, so, so much for watching. I will see you guys in the next one. Suki, signing off. Bye.